you know, 28 to 30 years now, and, and I don't ever remember us playing a James Keenan. Um, you always heard about him on TV. You always hear about him playing Clinton and East Duplin and, and vying for that conference championship up there and going deep in the playoffs. But we've never had the opportunity to, to have them come here or us go there. So um, I'm sure that they're thinking the same thing about us. We've always heard of South Columbus. We've heard how good their program is and the mystique about their program. So both sides right now, It'll take a while to fill each other out and see how this ball game goes. South Columbus has won the toss, and they have elected to receive to start the first half. They'll be going from left to right, and James Keene will be going from right to left. So sit back, relax, you know, get you a nice cold beverage, and join us here on the Columbus County Schools Social Media Network, 89.9 WZCO for high school football here in southeastern North Carolina. Kevin, you know what they say. You love Friday nights looking for a win. And love Saturday mornings when you found one. So that, I always think about that when I, when I drive up to a, a football field on, on Friday nights and all these kids getting excited. And, you know, there was some excitement at the school today. We had some posters up. Um, I don't know if anybody can see, you know, some pictures in the stands. But it's cowboy night here tonight. Um, we got a, our stallion crazies are dressed up like cowboys. Our cheerleaders are dressed up like, well, Children would be cowgirls, wouldn't it? Yes, wouldn't be sir. cowboys. And um, they've got cowbells and all kinds of stuff. So little things to try to get the um, the kids involved. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's about the high school students and letting them have fun. And let's hope that that can happen here tonight. We're going to pause a few moments for the presentation of colors by the South Columbus High School JROTC and the South Columbus High School Band. We'll be right back after the national anthem performed by the South Columbus High School Band. Okay, we are back just about to get underway here. Brett, you got two teams who are mirror images of each other. They use the run to set up the pass. James Keenan only thrown six times on the year. Rush Blackwell and the South Columbus offense thrown slightly more than that. But we're going to get a ground and pound kind of game. You know, a good old fashioned, I'm an old wrestling fan, so a good old fashioned slobber knocker. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, looking at the record for James Keenan, you know, they haven't had to throw it yet. They've probably been in ball games where, you know, they were in control and they were able to, you know, control the running game and um, they hadn't had to rely on the pass. I, I'm anxious to see what's going to happen if, you know, James Keenan gets down and has to resort to that passing game and, and see how, what happens. And I'm sure that's what um, South Columbus and, and Coach Dove would love to happen is to make James Keenan have to put the ball in there. Having only thrown six passes, I mean, 
not if you can get if you get this team in a track meet, it's going to be an interesting thing because South Columbus, you know, loves to run, but they've shown the ability to pass when they need to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's the good thing about Rush Blackwell. You know, he he he's a threat, as in you know running the ball. Um, he's a threat as in throwing it downfield, probably a little bit better, you know, hitting his short routes and, you know, five and ten yard outs and stuff like that. But, you know, he's a dual threat back there, and if he gets a chance to, you know, run the football, he's going to do it. And, and hopefully he can work with these backs and, you know, get South Columbus a win tonight. And here comes your South Columbus High School Stallions. Stallions under the direction of Russell Dove once again this year. Again, tough, tough start to the year. But you got to credit the South Columbus coaching staff not pressing the panic button and knowing that with a stout non-conference schedule, they're going to put in position themselves to be stronger and in the thick of things as the conference race starts next week. Well, and, and I think that's what um, Coach Dove was thinking when he was making the schedule. He knows that um, when you play tougher teams that you tend to get in the um, conference and you tend to do better because of the competition that you played. And I'm sure that was a big and vital part of what Coach Dove was thinking. You just hope that you get to that spot injury-free. And, you know, from what I understand, pretty much South Columbus are injury-free. Got a you know, couple of kids um, that, are, that are no longer with the South Columbus Stangs because of different circumstances and stuff like that. But, um, you know, the team that they got out here tonight, you know, ready to rock and roll against these, um, I think they're Cougars or Panther Tigers. 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 Um, Tigers from James Keenan, and you know when I see that color out there, I think of Clinton. You know, Clinton has that that Dark black horse. and gold. Yeah, I think of that, and you know, um, this is you know their big conference against our big conference. And I did find out that they are two A. They moved to two A a couple of years ago, so we'll see what happens here, Kevin. Number fifty eight, Brian Guardardo kicking off for the uh, for the Tigers. Jaheem Dixon back deep for the Stallions. On sides again. It's a great jump. kick. Recovered by the Tigers. Wow. Number eight, Mason Brown with the recovery. And pretty much they just outside Columbus, South Columbus. Well, Kevin, I, I looked over there, and um, I don't know if that was called, but I noticed on that 50-yard line that there was, the further South Columbus player was on the hash, and it left that whole corner open. And once it took that big hop, you know, James Keenan just come over and, and, rec- and received it and, Hey, here we go. James Keenan on the 50-yard line. That's, that's how you teach an onside kick or a squib kick. You take that, you know, two short bounces and one big tall one. Yep. First and 10 Tigers on the South Columbus 42. Quarterback in the eye formation. Hand up up the middle, takes it around the right side, number 15, David Zelaya. That was actually a, um, a straight... Um, a straight um, hike to, um, what do you call it there, Kevin? A direct a snap, snap. Snap. That was a direct snap to um, Zelaya there. Couldn't get my words there. It's been a long week. Zelaya's three-yard game makes a second and seven for the Tigers. Ball just short of the 40-yard line. And on my book, it says Zelaya's a freshman. <laughs> James King looking to start fast, you know, a long ride from Duplin County. Once again, around the corner to Zelaya. Zelaya picks up the first down. Is that Zelaya or Bostic there, Kevin? I believe it's 15, and that's to be Zelaya. Okay, all right. There's two Zelayas. There's a Kendrick and there's a David. I'm assuming that they're David brothers. David Zelaya. I'm assuming they're brothers, freshman and yeah. sophomore. Yeah, that's, that's, that's not a common name around these parts. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Just as we thought, James Keenan running the ball, and, and, you know, a sweep right there to the right side to their bench. Coming back around the other way, up the middle, and he will take it all the way down inside the 10. Yep, came back with that counter there, Kevin. It was wide open on the left side. Rolls down for looks like about 18-yard gain there. Devonta Gore saving a touchdown. First and goal, Tigers on the eight. I mean, everything rolling right for the Tigers right now. Soleil with the ball takes it on a keeper. Stallions grabbing jerseys just just short of the goal line. They had him in the backfield there and just couldn't hold on to his jersey long enough to bring him down. And, and I think, honestly, that's you know what's concerning Russell Dove right now. Is you got a lot of Stallions grabbing jerseys instead of laying a hat on somebody. Yep. Yep. It's like about, what, three yards to go? 
two and a half, a long three. Okay. Beautiful night here at South Columbus, though, okay. Kevin. Direct snap to Zalea once again. I Leans think he stopped short. A host of stallions stops him just short of the goal line. It's going to be third and inches, and you're definitely looking at two-down territory for the Tigers right now. Definitely so here, Kevin. I woke up today, and I walked outside, and I said, yep, it's football season. Felt, mm -hmm. felt great falls here. It was 90 degrees yesterday, 70 degrees today, and they say it's going to be about 45, 50 tomorrow morning. Ooh. Welcome, Paul. Yeah, Autumn, you go. are here. There we go. It's the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown. Here we go. Third and goal from about the two. Under, under center is I number 12. I think you got it, Kevin. That was a great push by the offensive line by James Keenan. Looks like a quarterback sneak just yeah. going in and getting in. Sladen Smith, the quarterback, not a small kid himself, gets behind those big horses and they drive into the end zone for the first score of the game. I mean, again, not a lot of fa – nothing fancy, just good old-fashioned, you know. Yep. They play the South Columbus ball, black hat football, yep. you know, horse on horse. And who's going to win at the line of scrimmage? You know, seeing that offensive set there, no wonder they don't have to pass a lot. Swinging gate formation oh, here for. I haven't seen that in a while. It's fun to watch, though. Guadardo with the extra nice point kick. is up. And it is good. Nice kick. Our score with 9.51 to go here in the first. James Keenan, the Tigers, up 7 0 on the Stallions. And Brett, not the start you wanted if you're South Columbus. Yeah. You, now, I'm sure that Coach Dove got his um, kickoff return team and talk to them about where they needed to be. And um, it, it seems like a lot of teams are going to that right side against South Columbus um, over there to um, Weldon Gore. Weldon Gore, I think last game we called here, had had five kickoffs to hit or um, kick to him. And, and that's where they look to go again tonight. So we'll see if, if, if they cover that up tonight and see if they can – you know, get something going on the kickoff return here. Weldon Gore, a baseball player for South Columbus, had multiple opportunities. He sure did. I actually joked with him in the hallway. I said, why don't you run those back for a touchdown? He just laughed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Russell Dove would have had a coronary if he tried. <laughs> Once again, Jaheim Dixon back deep for the Stallions. Little pooch. He, fair catch. Weldon Gore, right? Weldon Gore. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's almost as if we called for it. I know. I, I guess that these people or these teams see, you know, things on on film and notice that that's a side they want to go to. And a lot of times, it's not necessarily the player. A lot of times, teams love to kick toward their bench. Um, I really don't know, but um, that that's what a lot of teams love to do. First and ten stallions, the ball on their own 38-yard line. Rushing the shotgun. Backside camera pulls the ball out, takes it around the left-hand side, looks to pass. Complete. Complete down all the way to the 42-yard line. To number one, Jamarius Godson. Goodson. Jamarius Goodson with a I thought it was reception. A, I thought it was a busted play there, Kevin. Two, I thought it was the counter that they missed. But. For all the world, it looked when he pulled it out like yeah. there was, you know, it was yeah. a busted play. Uh, credit rush flag while keeping his head up looking yeah. for the open receiver. Yeah. First down, Stallions, the ball now on the James Keenan 42 after a 28-yard gain. There's the jet motion. Jet motion counter. Cuts it inside. Takes on two Tigers. and I mean. Let's get a number there, Kevin. That's number what? Number two. Two. Number two, DeMonta Gore. DeMonta Gore. Bull rushing. And credit Gore for finishing off the run, Brad. He put his head down and, you know, got five or six more yards. Ball on the 29 for the Stallions, first and 10. And, Brett, it's it's going to be a back-and-forth kind of ball game, best on best. Oh, yeah. It's like line up in a double wing here. Split left. I mean, it's full playbook, you know, open for South Columbus at this point. And this is the way you want to answer here to South Columbus offense. Empty backfield. Blackwell on the keeper, takes it up the middle, picks up maybe two or three. Oh, fumble, but we were um, South Columbus recovered. I didn't see that ball come out, but that's the danger, Brad. If you're, <laughs> you know, if you're the quarterback running up in the briar patch, those big fellas in the middle, they hit and they hit hard. Now, if you remember, um, Rush Blackwell was um, was hurt the first three games of the year, 
and I'm I'm sure he's probably close to 100 percent. But you know, he's still probably a little wobbly a little bit on his injury. Second and seven for the Stallions. Ball in about the 26. Double tight wing, quick hitch pass. Starts in and out. Takes the ball about the 21. It'll be third and about four for the Stallions. Andrew Todd with the reception. It's a nice design play there. Um, the um, the split the split back came inside and made the reception. The fullback went downfield and um and blocked. So really good design play. Gains about eight for the Stallions. And if you notice, probably we started talking about the run games of both of these teams to start the game, and Stallions already in this first drive, two for two in the passing game. Yep. And and I think Stallions are probably going to be forty pass forty percent pass sixty percent run. Backside counter, fakes the counter, casing himself off to the left-hand side. He could He's go all the way. He's racing to the corner, and he He's is in it. the end zone. There you go. Nice play. 21-yard touchdown by Rush Blackwell. Fake the inside counter. The inside linebacker sucked in, Brett, and it was all over but the dancing on the left-hand side for Rush Blackwell. Rush Blackwell, glad to get back behind center here at South Columbus at the OK Corral, and you know, takes it off the edge and takes it to the house 21 yards, 17 yards for the touchdown. 17-yard touchdown for Blackwell. Kick is up, and it is straight down Broadway. There we go. Straight down Broadway, and we got a 7-7 score, 7.30 to go in a quick moving first quarter, Brett. You know, it reminded me of that game last night. I don't know if you got watched the NFL game last night with the Browns. Um, actually, it was um, NC State's ex-quarterback versus North Carolina's ex-quarterback. Trubisky and Brichette played against each other. And really good game. Brichette looked really good for the um, Browns waiting yeah. for, I guess, Deshaun Watson to come back in week well, 13. Yeah. Watson's on the bench, and I don't think anybody saw that many points coming out of the Cleveland offense. Yeah, yeah I, 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 they looked really good last night. But getting back to this game, you know, South Columbus – didn't put their head down. They came up. They, they drove the ball down and, and did everything right that series. And like we said, Brett, in our pregame, records are deceiving. I mean, here's a 3-1 and one, you know, Tiger team coming in saying, okay, we finally got some stiffer competition. And we got blown out last week, and now South Columbus is running with us. Yep. Jerry Kane's told me today that he's going to be running um, some tight end this week for the first time ever. So we'll take a look at that to see what happens there. Pooch kick up, another one. Taking on about the fair catch with about the 39 yard line. He probably should have let that ball go out of bounds, kid. Well, I don't think he knew where he was at that point. Yeah. So he got all the way turned around. Yeah. Kind of caught over his shoulder, Willie Mays style. Yep. And I assume you have a Willie Mays card. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've actually got the card where he's making that catch. Pretty the, cool. say, the say hey kid. Yeah. You got to be impressed I knew that. Oh, I know you're you're gen you're a genius just you don't like to show it. I I, <laughs> I, I like the term idiot savant. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. James Keenan, let's see what they got this time. They you know, weren't stopping on anything last drive. Let's see if South Columbus can make an adjustment. South Columbus got to bow their backs here in the running game. I mean, they got pretty much right now nine people within 5 yards of the box. Said we're coming at you. A lot of direct snaps, Kevin. Direct snap there to 14. That one came right to quarter of the uh, Tyquise Wilson. Picks up about four, maybe five, be second and five for the, actually second and six for the Tigers. On our card, Tyquise doesn't have a um, position, but he is a sophomore. He's a jack of all trades. Probably do it all. I I'm still trying to figure out what the uh, ATH ATA is. The yeah. authorized captain, I guess. I don't know. Authoritarian. Could just be an athlete. <laughs> Second and six. Counter back Ca this way. Counter reverse. Strung out by the Stallions. Nice Nice tackle. open field tackle by number one, Jamarius Goodson. Goodson showing out here in the first quarter, Brent. But I do think he got enough for the first down or maybe a tad short, Kevin. They're going to mark him short. Third and about one. Third and one. You know, maybe even a touchdown saving tackle because he had a lot of green he in did. front of him. He did. You think they're going to pass it here, Kevin? <laughs> the, the odds farm. are against it. <laughs> bet the farm. <laughs> if there's one sure bet, they're going to run it. I'm calling I'm calling quarterback sneak. Brett, we're already 6-19 to go here in the first quarter. This is a quick-moving quarter. I'm calling quarterback sneak. 
No. Oh, fumble, fumble snap. Side of Columbus in the backfield. Oh. Just gets it past the line of scrimmage. And all he needed was about a yard, and he picked it up, and we got first and ten Tigers on the 50. 65 for um, James Keenan did a great job of um, hitting that block to keep his quarterback from getting sacked there. He, he didn't need to get much of them, and he got just about enough. He did. Six minutes to go here in the first. We got a tie score, 7-7. Seven, seven. James Keenan with the ball for the second time. South with an opportunity to make a stop, unable to make it. And we'll see what we got. Direct snap to – no, that was a – oh, that that got me, Kev. <laughs> number five. Oh, Kevin nice Zalea. tackle by number – Number two came over there and just smoked him on the side, DeMonta Gore. DeMonta Gore. I'd love a, to see that on replay. Laying a stick on Zalea. He came from the back side. And, watch this, Kevin. Watch DeMonta Gore on the back side. You can't really see it because they zoomed in. But he came from that back side to make that tackle. There you go. DeMonta Gore comes around and gets Kendrick Zalea this time, saving a touchdown. But we are coming back the other direction, Brett. Oh, that's that old laundry, Kevin. Get you every time. I thought we had enough of that last week, Brett, but a holding call. We'll bring it back. What's that song, Dirty Laundry? What's that song by a foreigner? Dirty Laundry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Somebody at home can probably tell me if that's foreigner that sings that or whatever. Now, I remember Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap. Now, that's ACDC right there. There you go. So, that's a big, you know, big thing for South Columbus there. That, that got them 50 yards back. That's a 50-yard penalty there, really. At least. And now we are at first and 20, back on the South Col on the Tiger side of the field on the 40. They are jammed up in there in that box, aren't they, Kevin? They are. Oh, he's looking to pass. And he completes it. Well, that's hey, that's, oh. that's that one for the game. Tendency breaker. And I'm sure South Columbus was not looking for that any at all because, you know, they just know James Keenan runs the ball. But, hey, nice pass. Um, gains them about 14 yards, so it's going to be second and about six. Yeah, and that looks a lot better than first and 15. Yeah. See, Andrew Rice is um, watching us or listening to us. Um, shout out to Andrew Rice, a former coach here at South Columbus. Second and six for the Tigers. Now it'll be second and one. South Columbus shooting himself in the foot. and Was it on South Columbus or was that false start? James Keenan acting like false. Okay. All right. Yeah, that ain't good there. Man stepped in the neutral zone, caused the offense to jump. Gives him the first down, Brett. First down, Tigers on the South Columbus 39. South Columbus, I mean, at this point, you know, I know Russell Dove is, you know, Cringing with these mental mistakes at this point in the year. Backside dive right at the middle. Uh, All the way. Another nice tackle. Number eight, Mason Brown with the carry. And South Columbus, unfortunately, if, you know, if you're a Stallion fan right now, making tackles in the secondary. Yeah, and, and shoestring tackles in the um, secondary. And you, you don't want that to happen. And, you know, you, you, had, a, you had a big play here. Um, third and about, what was it, fourth and one. Had a chance to stop him, didn't do it, and now James Keenan's threatening again. Once again, dives up the middle. Zoya. Take it for maybe a couple. Stacy Prince um, told me that that is Don Henley, dirty line. Don Henley. So, thank you, Stacy. She keeps me straight at school and on the air. Pick up a four, a second and six for the Tigers. And, Brett, for so many people in the box, Stallion's really not getting a whole lot of penetration on the defensive line tonight. Well, that's a big offensive line for the um, for the, the um, Tigers of um, James Keenan, and they're just getting a big old push off South Columbus. Um, and, and that's the sign of a good, you know, running team there. Take a, taking off up the middle is Bostic. Bostic bounces around, gets close to first down yards. Yeah, he's checking in, though. A bunch of black helmets and black jerseys around that tackle. But, again, you know, getting second level is Bostic, and he looks to be very close to the first down. The 
The Montegore, you hear his name a lot with tackles tonight. First and goal for the Tigers, 3.09 to go here in the first. Looks like we're going to have a little bit of a track meet here. Yeah, South Columbus did a good job, you know, in the, in the red zone last time defense. So let's see what they can do. Quick hitter up the middle to oh. number four, Manny Bostic. He, uh, looks Bostic like he, into the end zone. Looks like he walked in untouched. So, um, James Ken doing a great job on the offensive line blocking and, and creating holes for their running backs, and that's probably why they run the ball an awful lot. Bostic with a six-yard touchdown makes the score 13-7, 2.56 to go here in the first. And, Brett, South Columbus is going to have to answer the bell once again. Well, let, let's see if they can do it. Um, like I said, it could be a, a shootout here at the OK Corral. Hadn't seen a good one of those here in a long time, so I'd really love to see it. Already got a penalty flag. Is that too many men on the field for the Stallions? Possibly. Let's see. I'm taking There just seem to be a lot of black jerseys out okay. there. Okay. Motion. Se- Must be a formation penalty. Because I really didn't see anybody move. <clears throat> Guardardo had a lot of leg on the first one, Brett. So I don't think it's going to matter too much to him. Unless the wind starts kicking in here, and I don't think that will. Number two is perfect. Kick is up. That looks good to me. And it is good. Our score with 2.56 to go here in the first. James Keenan up 14-7. Stallions once again having to answer the bell, Brett. And realistically, the difference in this game is that opening kickoff. It is, Kevin. You you know, when you go back to think about it, um, James Keenan was able to get that onside kick and score off of it. And um, bad thing about that for the Stallions that James Keenan will get the ball start second half. Quick moving first quarter, only you know, a little bit under three minutes to go, Brett. And if this is going to go the way it seems to be going, you're going to, you know, possession is going to be in a premium. Yeah, and um, you know, like I said, South Columbus's last drive was pretty much perfect. They executed everything they wanted to execute, and Coach Dove is is hoping to build on that during this ser- next series coming up. See. A, Probably going to see a lot of Rush Blackwell. Um, you're going to see him rolling out in, out of the pocket, trying to hit receivers on the outside. A lot of the same things that happened in the first drive. Okay, now give me odds. What are the odds the ball's going to Weldon Gore? I'm going to say at least 80% or more. Now, I, mean, I wouldn't bet the farm on it, but I would I'd take a risk. Fair caught once again. How can they hit him if he fair caught it? a good question. Did he raise his hand? Looked to me like he did, but then again, I'm all the way up here. Well, then, okay, that's that, a good question. So, you fair catch a ball, they're not supposed to be able to hit you after you catch it, right? And they but just guess, hit him. But I guess you can get blocked into them. Possibly, and that may be what happened. Okay, I'm not going to say it isn't. But it, First and 10, Stallions ball just short of the 43 of South Columbus. Blackwell brings them to the line. They tried to kick it to um, Weldon, but they didn't get it to him. Twins right for the Stallions. Blackwell back to pass once again. Rolls to his right. Nice completion to number two to Montegore. Gore slips one tackle and picks up about six or seven for the Stallions. The Montegore is doing everything but selling popcorn in the stands. He's doing it offensively, defensively. Kids having a great night so far. I mean, DeMonta really stepping up as a leader for the Stallions early in this ball game. DeMonta is a, a junior and, re, I mean, re, really stepping into that role on both ends of the football. Second and four for the Stallions. Ball just short of midfield. Low snap. Inside pass. Ooh, nice Dangerous move. pass, but he picks up maybe three. It's going to be third and one for the Stallions. Number three, Andrew Todd with a, with a completion. Right here, I would look maybe to the fullback, Jaheim Dixon, or possibility of Rush Blackwell just, you know, taking it up the middle if they don't feel comfortable with the handoff. This close to midfield, is it two-down territory, Brett? Oh, heck yeah. If you're South Columbus, you know that. Okay, timeout. Or are they changing the play? Changing the play. Thought they had an earlier procedure, so they're going to rerun it. Backside handoff to Dixon. Runs the counter there. I don't see that call there, but, hey. Hey, you you run that play thinking that you're going to have to have another down to get it. 
but you don't expect to lose four yards. Exactly. Now, now it becomes a little bit more dangerous. Yeah, now you got now a that question. you lost three yards, do you go for a fourth and four on this side of the 50? I don't. I don't. I, I got to kick this ball away because you don't want to give James Keenan that ball at J- that spot. James Keenan has started on average about the 40-45 yard line. Here we go, rolling the dice for the Stallions or maybe trying to pull them off sides, possibly. Here we go. He's got him. Got he's him, and he's the got first the first down. down. Jumps inside, delivers a blow, and picks up the first down at the 35. There we go. You're great when you get it. You're not when you don't. You know, my, you know strike while the iron's hot. DeMontagore with the football delivers the blow. I love the way he's finishing runs, Brett. Yep, he, he does a good job. He punishes tacklers for trying to tackle him. And that don't show up a lot in the stats early in a ball game, but if you're delivering punishment early – and when people, you know, when fatigue starts setting in late, you I mean you got a whole different, you know, ball game. First and ten, Stallions ball on the Tiger thirty-five. Blackwell on the keeper pops it outside. He'll pick up a good three or four before being taken down to about the thirty-one. Flag on the play. Okay, here, here's what I don't understand. Okay, this referee held his flag at that spot until the tackle was made and then dropped it. I don't. He should have went ahead and called that. Yeah, that's that's not a – to me, that's not a good, not a good job by the official. He waited to see what was going to happen and then dropped the flag. He didn't throw it when it happened. Is that – you know, is that because, you know, other than, anything other than mechanics? Probably? That's just bad mechanics in my, in my view. But, hey, that's why me and you's up here and they're down there. And I'm like, oh, start getting paid. This goes back to this. Sorry, we're chewing on M&Ms up here. But anyway, um, you don't want to get behind the chains. And now because of that penalty, you have put yourself behind the chains and put you in a situation where it's going to be tough. And you can't do that if you're South Columbus and, and be, you know, what you want to be. First and 20 for the Stallions, Brett. 18.1 to go here in the first half. Stallions take a timeout. And again, you know, Stallions hurting themselves more than being hurt by the James Keenan defense, but you don't want to be back behind two sticks. Right. And, you know, and truthfully, that's the, you know, the only time they've been behind the sticks all game, but it's in a bad situation. You know, first and ten. Now, if you're, if you're first, if you're second and five or something like that and you get a penalty, it's not as bad. But when you get 10 yards or 20 yards beyond the um, first down marker, that's tough. 20, getting 20 yards is tough. Now, if you're South Columbus, obviously you've got a screen game, draw. Do you keep going back to that counter, or do you try something maybe, maybe not a scene? Well, you know, the counter is their bread and butter play, and you're going to um, you know, run plays off of it and stuff. But they've been very successful with the with the rollouts by um, Rush Blackwell and, and hitting the um, outside receivers. And until James Keenan can stop that, I'm sure they're going to go back to the bank and try to cash in. First and 20 for the Stallions, ball back on the 46. Hand off up the middle. Picks up maybe one or two. That would be number 15, Rush Blackwell. Number one, Josh Mitchell Mitchell makes the tackle there. Really good tackle because if he don't make the tackle there, I think Blackwell gains at least 10, 15 more yards. And the one here in South Columbus. A score, James Keenan, 14, South Columbus 7. We'll be right back after a quick break here on the Columbus County Social Media Networks and 89.9 WZCO. ...is interactive and a foundational learning experience for every teacher coach at the interscholastic level. Hi, Coach. Good to have you here. Other educational offerings include the NFHS First Aid for Coaches, created in conjunction with the American Red Cross, along with numerous sports-specific elective and free courses. The NFHS provides officials the tools and skills to conduct fair contests and enhance their careers through an innovative set of online courses, as well as online access to rules and casebooks in a searchable format. In addition to athletics, the nation's high schools also offer Okay, Brett, we are back for second quarter action, one quarter in the books. South Columbus behind the eight ball, second and long, two sticks to go, probably about 16 or 17. And South Columbus not, you know, 
not challenged yet by the Tiger defense, but challenge, you know, the challenge is, you know, can you shore up the mental errors and get in the end zone and tie this ball game? Well, I'm sure Coach Dove right now is telling them, you know, hey, we got three downs to get what we need. We got about 20 yards to go. You know, we, we don't have to get them all in one chunk here. Seven yards here, seven yards there, seven yards there. First down. I don't mind telling you. Do you know what the job I want tonight? I want to be the punter for these two teams. Yeah, because they're probably not going to do nothing. Counter inside up the middle. Counter, gets it inside the sticks, so picks up about two or three. Actually, probably about second and – sorry, third and 14. Ball on the James Keenan 42. Look for um, Rush Blackwell to um, to roll out here to the wide side of the field toward um, South Columbus's bench and, and try to, you know, make a pass or if they're covered, pull it down and, and try to get the first down from there. The vaunted RPO. Run pass option, yes. Back well back to pass. That is one tackler. No. Nope. Does not get away from number 23. Yeah, 23. Marcus Baisden. And I think if you're South Columbus right now, you do have to punt. Yeah, yeah. I, I was hoping they were going to take advantage of, of this wide side toward their um, bench, but but didn't go that route and just tried to – I'm yeah. assuming that that was probably a um, a, um, a, a waggle kind of divide pass. Um, I, I think, I think you, you said it earlier in the game, you know, South Columbus when, you know, you don't let Blackwell be stationary. He's more of a – you know, if you make him a moving target and give him that option – Agree one hundred percent. Agree one hundred percent, Kevin. Mm. All right, snap. Mm. And another, yeah, you know, another fumble and turnover by South. And now all of a sudden, James Keenan, you know, already in Stallion territory. First and ten, ball on the thirty-seven, thirty-eight yard line. It's like the, it's like the front wheel came off, Kevin. Mm -hmm. All the wheels ain't off, but the front wheel came off during that possession, and you, you, you hope you can get that sucker back on. And it's the difference between being tied 14-14, uh, Brett, and maybe going down 21-7. South Columbus defense really have to bow their back early in the second quarter. And they hadn't been able to stop James Keenan all night, so. I mean. Look, my, at, look at that offensive line, Kevin. That offensive line is pushed down the field 10 yards. I've got a credit number 77, and that's Elijah May. <laughs> and we talked about him at the first of the yep. game. You know, yeah. big number 77 out there. May's a road grader out there. Once again, the lay up the middle. He'll yeah. take it around the left-hand side. He'll be in for the touchdown. Bostic with a 28-yard touchdown makes this score 20-7 to in favor of James Keenan. And... Things are changing quick, Kevin. Unfortunately, one mistake begets another, and you know, all of a sudden it becomes, you know, a two-score game. You, you go back to that penalty, you know, getting behind the, the chains and, and can't make up for it and and giving James Keenan really good field position on the, the snap over the punter's head, and it leads to a, a touchdown. Kick is up, and it is. Good. Our score with 10.09 to go here in the first half. James Keenan, 21, South Columbus 7. I guess, Brett, if you're looking for a bright side for the Stallions, this is still really early in the ballgame. South Columbus has shown the ability to move the football, and a two-score game is not as out of reach as it might seem. Yeah, you know, you come back here and you get a touchdown, 21-14. That's still a, um, you know, a really close game. Um, just if you're coached of, you got to tell guys, hey, guys, we've had a great – First half so far, except for the penalties. We cut back on the penalties. We can we can play with these guys. I mean, you're not being out-athleted. Out, out you're just, you know, if you shore up your mental errors, you can not only play with this team, but you can play well with this team. Yeah. The, um, the biggest thing I see for in this game is the offensive line of James Keenan. They're just a step beyond – the defensive line of um, South Columbus area. But, you know, look at the size of them. I mean, the boys on for James Keenan are 
or 250, and then our down lineman defensively is, you know, about 175. So if you're that's, that's a law of gravity or whatever you call it. If you're a South Columbus, do you creep those linemen up and get you know put your secondary at risk with a pass? First deep kickoff for James Keenan, taken up the middle by South Columbus. Who was that? Was that Jaheim Dixon there? That was number Dixon, yeah. Jaheim Dixon. Talking, taking down by number 23, Marcus Bates, and South Columbus takes over. First and 10 ball on about the 36. I'm hoping that they can get um, Blackwell out in space like you were talking about a while ago and, and let him do something you know, more out on the wide side of the football field. I think that's where you're going to see South Columbus you know, achieve more. Timeout, James Keenan. A lot of confusion on that James Keenan defense. Not everybody knew where to line up. And I, I, I like Blackwell in the sense that he's a threat to pull it down and run it, Brett. And I think if you like you said, if we get him, if you get him out of space, mm -hmm. you know, he can make things happen and he can force you into a mistake. Yeah, but the the negative part of that, Kevin, is <laughs> you making your quarterback very vulnerable each time that he carries the football like that. And because he's a big part of your offense, you don't want to run him that much. You, you, want, to, you want to save him because, you know, you don't want to get the kid hurt um, because you got to have him back there. He's, you're a lot better football team when you, you have him back there. So, you know, you want to run him sparingly. But, you know, he's been told if, if you find a, a seam or a spot or whatever, you go ahead and take it. Cowbells are out, Kevin. <laughs> Need more cowbell, Brett. I like, I've never seen a cheerleader on top of the pyramid take a video of the um, people in the stands before. Cool. New technology. Blended learning there, Kevin. There you go. Here we go. First and ten stags. Hitch pass over to number three, Andrew Todd. They tried that one time before, Kevin. It got them about seven yards, but I think um, James Keenan was, um, was sniffing that one out a little bit. Honestly, Brett, yeah. I think the fact that it was the short side of the field, there were just too many jerseys over there. Maybe that would, might have worked a little bit better on the right side. Possibly. No gain on the play. Second and ten for the Stallions. 9.40 to go here in the first half. Blackwell fakes the short pass. Flushed out of the pocket. Ooh. Makes the ball himself. Here and there and everywhere he goes. Nowhere to run. Just around the line of scrimmage, maybe lost about a yard or two, and it'll be third and long for the Stallions once again. You know, James Keenan did a good job there of filling up every slot so that Blackwell could not slip through anywhere. He, he couldn't find a hole anywhere. Blackwell ran for about 10 yards, but unfortunately it was all behind the line of scrimmage. 8.58 to go here in the, in the first half. James Keenan with a two-touchdown lead. Now you see this defensive line of James Keenan sort of take over the game also. Three down linemen. Sal taking their second timeout, not liking what they're seeing. I mean, that, that's the impressive part, Brett. You're looking at a 3-5 defensive alignment mm -hmm. you know, with three down linemen. If they're getting home with three, you know. And South he, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that makes it very tough to pass on that type of defense too. And they're – they're fully expecting a pass right here. That's why they had that 3-5 defense. Um, you know. Content to let a pass go in front of them, Brett. They just don't want to get beat by on two sticks. Right, right. You know, I, I don't know what you draw up right here. Um, maybe the counter um, coming back would give you five or six, seven yards if you run it correctly, and maybe you can break it for 10 or 15 there since they're, they're backed off the line of scrimmage. So possibly a, um, a counter here. Again, if you're South Columbus down two scores, you know, you got a double-edged sword here. You, you're really leery about going for a fourth down play, but also your last fumble, your last punt was fumbled. Twins right for the Stallions ball on about the 34. Makes the pass rolls out to his right. Throws wide back open. to his left, and he's wide open. Jaheem Dixon taking – 
out of bounds on about the 40-yard line. Nice call by Russell Grady Dove there. Russell Dove calls roll right, throw back to the left, yep. and everybody went with Blackwell, yep. and there was nobody there with Jaheim Dixon. Yep, Dixon was out there all alone. He said, here, throw it to me, and did a good job of, of settling down making the catch, and then turning it upfield. That's a lonely feeling out there by yourself yeah. on the left. He better be glad he caught it because I would have got on him Monday morning. Big first down for the Stallions. First and 10 on the 40 of James Keenan. Is that DeMonta Gore again off the right side? Yep. Gore off the right side picks up three or four. South Columbus in danger of putting that James Keenan offense back on the field. Picks up a big first down, and they're starting to get deep into Tiger territory. Second and six for the Stallions. Backside counter once again. Picks up maybe one, maybe two, before being taken down by number 43, Desmond Player. Looks like we got a couple of people, 42 people watching on the live stream. If you are, give us a shout out on Facebook. We'd love to hear from you. Third and about seven for the Stallions, Brett. On about the 37, 38 yard line, having a two down territory if you're the Stallions at this point, trying to get back in this ball game. Blackwell fakes the pass, takes it up the middle, gets a Good head of steam going. He may he, have it there, Kevin. I he think is, he does. If he doesn't, he's awful close to first down territory. That's sort of like a, a draw. You know, he, he he ran back and then he went. So, a quarterback draw there. I'm sure that was a design play. Um, South Columbus years ago used to run a really great um, draw play with the fullback where the fullback would just stay there. Quarterback would run back and just slip it in his pocket, run for a lot of yards. First and ten stallions on old James Keenan, 29. And, Brett, if you were James Keenan, you have a 3-5 alignment. Do you sacrifice an inside linebacker as a spy on Blackwell? And that's probably what you need to do. Blackwell rolls off to the right. Picks up about two or three. He'll be taken down to about the 26, 27-yard line. Six Blackwell's going to sleep well tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 6.48 to go here in the first half. South Columbus taking their time in no hurry, have plenty of time. But it really needs to put the ball in the end zone, Brett, to shorten up this score before halftime. And it, it's very important that South Columbus can get it in here and then possibly make a stop. Now, what you would like to do is, you know, take a bunch of time off this clock and, and score and only give the ball back to James Keenan. Oh, Black nice play. Blackwell. How did he stay up? He, not he stays <laughs> up, Brett, but he picks up three or four yards in the process. Wow. You and I had that coordination way, way, way back in the day. I was, I was thinking this um, referee back here was going to blow him dead with his knee going down, but watch, watch on the replay. Does his knee go down? No, no, definitely doesn't. Great job by number 15. The graceful one, Rush Blackwell. Third and about six, maybe seven. And Blackwell puts South Columbus in a much better position. South Columbus going tight this time. You're definitely in two down. This South la last time out, right, Kevin? Yep, last time out. Here's the danger for your South Columbus, Brett. If you score too quickly here, James Keenan will get a possession on this side of halftime and on the other side of halftime. Oh, I agree, Kevin. That's what I was saying a while ago. You know, you're, you're, you're battling the clock here and you're battling the defense. What you would love to happen is for you to score with under two minutes left, um, make it a 21-14 um, game, kick it off to James Keenan, and then they don't score. And then you, you come back with James Keenan getting the ball. Hopefully you can cause a turnover, maybe cause a stop. I mean, I don't see South Columbus's defense – stopping James Keenan. South Columbus has got to hope that James Keenan will stop themselves offensively with a penalty fumble or something like that. Both these teams, Brett, <laughs> not used to being in a ball game at this point in the game. Both teams have been, you know, either blowing out their opponents or being blown out. So, you know, conditioning may be a factor in the second half as well. Got my brother down in Jacksonville, Florida listening to us. Um, big... Big NC State fan and Stallion fan listening down in Jacksonville. And despite that, he's probably okay. <laughs> <laughs> Black 
Blackwell up the middle again, gets pinned about the um, about the 28-yard line. Looks like a gain of about maybe two, and it's going to bring up about fourth and four, Kevin. Big play for South Columbus. You really don't want to give the ball back with five minutes to go. Let's see what Grady Dove draws up right here. He's done. Coach Dove has done a great job of calling a football game on fourth down. Let's see if he can come up with another one. Rush Blackwell needed a little of that Blackwell magic. We'll see. Here we go. Cuts uh, around the right side. Picks uh, up just. He didn't like get it. I don't think he did, Kevin. Did yeah. he? No, he went he out of bounds. He stepped out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. Yep. The only saving grace of that, Brad, is you finally giving – Finally giving James Keenan a long field if they're going to score before halftime. You know what I think South Columbus could run coming up in the second. I'm seeing everything shift, everything shift. Throw a reverse on them. Backside counter, a backside naked quarterback, you know, keeper. Let me let me send a text to Coach Dove telling him to look at the – not joking. <laughs> Tell him to look at the reverse. First and ten Tigers ball in their own 22, their worst starting position to start the game. Yes, you know, yes. You know, during this game, Brett, they've been averaging and, about starting, you know, either right. about midfield or better. And if you're going to stop James Keenan, this is where you're going to stop him because they're definitely not in um, four-down territory here. So if, if something good can happen for the Stallions, they can make stop here. Quarterback keeper up the middle picks up about a seven or eight. Actually, I think he gets it past the sticks, and it'll be first and ten for the Tigers. And they're in a hurry up out there. They got plenty of time. I don't know. That's going to be too many men on the field, but not called. Bostic once again takes it off the left-hand side. Ball out, and South Columbus has recovered. South and they're, they're calling it down. Really? South Columbus actually got um, I lucky guess, I got to see this again, Brett, because they're, they're calling him down on the field and no fumble. I couldn't tell. Tough, tough break for South Columbus, who really could have used that break to get back in his football game. 4:02 to go here in the first half. James Keenan once again on, you know, on their way, but South Columbus had a chance to get a break and just couldn't get the ball out early enough. It looked like it was a fumble to me, Kevin. Me too, but again, <laughs> we're a long ways away. Number 15. Davis Zalea having himself a heck of a first half, and he'll pick up another first down for the Tigers. A lot of Zaleas. Again, that's not a typical Southeastern North Carolina name. First and 10 Tigers ball in a 22 of South Columbus. South Columbus desperately needing a stop with 3.39 to go here in the first half. South Columbus just hadn't had the ability to stop James Keenan offensively. Like I said, you, you hope for a fumble, turnover, you know, penalty, whatever. And it looks like they had one there, but it was called down. Big direct snap to number nine, Hassan Cordega. And that's a big fullback, Brett. He's tough to bring down. You know, he, he's, he's like a mailman. He always delivers. That's a large fellow. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to get in front of him. Second and four for the Tigers, driving with 3.15 to go here in the first half. Ball on about the 16-yard line. If you're South Columbus, you're hoping that you can make a stop here because you don't want to go down, you know, three touchdowns. Once again, up the middle is number 15, Zalea. And just Stallions just desperate to get a push up there in the middle. But Zalea, big, you know, big, tall runner. You know, James Keenan is averaging six, seven yards a carry. And it is, it's hard to stop teams that are averaging six and seven yards a carry. When they got short trips to go to get to the sticks, it's, you know, awful hard to stay in a ball game that way. First and going from about the nine. So lay off to the left-hand side. Picking down about the five or six. 
second and goal. I mean, right now, Pierre Stallions, you need somebody to make a play. Yeah, that, that's exactly what you need somebody to come through. You know, maybe, you know, linebackers need to, you know, stun a little bit more than what they've been doing, trying to put a lot of some more pressure in the backfield. You know, some, some kind of change has got me made because the, the defensive line is tough for them to handle those, you know, big boys of James Keenan. Up the middle goes Cornegay. Cornegay to the goal line, and he is. He's in. In for the touchdown. Cornegay with a six-yard touchdown. Makes the ball 27, makes the score 27-7 in favor of James Keenan. Again, you know, everything working right now for James Keenan. And, I mean, it's just size on size, Brett. And yeah. South Columbus in past years has had those big offensive and defensive lines. And mm -hmm. just this year they don't have the size. Yep. I agree. That That's the key to the ball game here is just the size of the offenses and defensive line compared to South Columbus. Kick is up. And it is good. Our score with just under two minutes to go here in the first half. James Keenan, 28, South Columbus, 7. South Columbus has had their opportunities, Brett, several times being in James Keenan territory and just can't seal the deal. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been down there, but just, you know, they got behind the sticks a couple of times and, and could not convert. And um, James Keenan's just pretty much doing everything right. And credit to James Keenan team, I mean, Saying okay, we know what we know our record, what our record is, but you know we're stepping up in competition. And credit the Tigers for stepping up with it. Yeah, I mean this this is the team I expected to come out and play tonight. You know, from what I saw at the little jamboree that they had, um, I, I knew they were really big coming into this. I knew that South Columbus would struggle um, on the offensive and defensive lines, and that has really shown here tonight. Um, you know, the, the battle in the dirt is what we call it, and James Keenan is definitely win, winning the battle in the dirt. Once again, we're back here on special teams where it seems like everything happens. Is it coming this way, Kevin? It, yeah. You're the welding core. All right, Weldon's he's lacing up his shoes. He's getting his, um, his gloves on tight, so he's expecting the ball right here. The Weldon Gore hour is. Now, is anybody playing in county this week? I know West Columbus is off. West Columbus got a forfeit win against Sand Hills. Yep. And East Columbus is playing. Okay. Oh, they kick it deep. All the way deep to Dixon. He'll take the ball in about the 16. I think that's Gore. DeMonte yeah. Gore? I think so, because Dixon was on this side. I'm not okay. exactly sure. Yeah, that's, so that is DeMonte Gore. Okay, yep. And Lane Burris says, nice color commentary, Brett Burris. <laughs> He's just trying to get on my good side. I see. Brett Burris, where's the defense? <laughs> we trying. And Juette Farmer's watching. Yep. Love everybody to watch on Facebook. I hope they don't get bored with me and you talking. But, again, there's a reason Brett and I have in our contract no close-ups because we do want you coming each and every weekend. Well, speak for yourself. There's the toss sweep. Toss sweep off the right. He'll pick up first down yards, and it'll be first and ten stallions on about their own 46. And, you know, you, you got a minute and 30 seconds left, but you have no timeouts here, Kevin. That's what's going to hurt you on this drive is that you had to burn your timeouts in your first couple of drives. So you've got to go um, 55 yards in a minute and 36 seconds. Stallions with a passing game to do it, but lately that Tiger uh, defensive line has been getting close. Deep pass up, he's over. over, and he oh, will score. Oh, he about to, oh my goodness, yeah. you see that? Yeah. He about dropped it going in. Nice play. Right over the defender's head. South Columbus camps up under it, runs it for the touchdown. 55-yard touchdown. Is that Gore? Who caught that in there, Kevin? Was it DeMonta Gore? By number three. three. Andrew Todd with the 55-yard okay, touchdown, gone. Brett. Did Rubbing the passer called against the Tigers, Brett. And that'll go on the kickoff, Kevin, or what? It'll go on the kickoff. Okay. Stallions got a chance to cut this lead and have to make it 28-14. Nice ball thrown by Rush yeah. Blackwell and equally nice um, catch by the receiver there. Credit the receiver picking, you know, catching the ball at his highest point yep. too, Brett. Yep. I mean, 
Great vertical by Todd. Dove said that's how we drew it up. And they scored with what? They took them 30-some seconds to score? They can't return they that. They can't return. Can and Kyle, and um, can you college and pro? Yes. Okay. 28-13 our score, 122 to go here in the first half. Brett. Again, Steins with a 55-yard touchdown, but then shoot themselves in the foot on the extra point. Well, I'm going to tell you now, a minute 22 with this offense of James Keelan, don't think that they're just going to take a knee. They're, they're going to try to get more points on the board here. Again, the Stallions, you know, if they can clean up their own stuff, can run and can play with this team. I mean, offenses are both offenses are playing strong. If, you know, South Columbus goes in at halftime, Brett, and if you're Russell Dove, what do you tell your team? You know, I say, guys, we're, we're playing a really good football team. I said, only thing we got to do is we got to step up a little bit defensively. Um, we're going to make a couple of changes um, to try to counteract their running game. And um, just, just getting into the minds of the kids that you're going to change something up, that, that we've got a chance. That's all you want to instill in your kids. One twenty-two to go here in the first half. South Columbus to kick the ball off going from right to left. Brett outside trying to angle for one of those cowbells. <laughs> Deep kickoff for South. Ball taken on about the 21. Off to the right-hand side is number five, oh, no. Kendrick Zalea. Zalea with a convoy going down the left-hand side. He'll be taken down wow. about the 19. Maybe that's, again, Kevin, that's why they don't keep it, keep it deep, right? Mm -hmm. That's the danger. It always comes back to haunt you. And I know Coach Dove said, well, if we kick it deep, it'll be tougher for them to score. And I can understand that. Um, but it just seems like it always comes back and bites South Columbus in the foot every time you kick it deep. Okay, you're a James Keenan coach right now, Brett. You got first and 10 on the visiting 19 with 110 to go. What are you calling? I'm calling the same thing I've been calling all night. I'm, I'm um, complete offensive line up the middle, 10 yards and every time. And I'm looking at Cornegay probably again up the middle. Off to the left-hand side, picks up about six or seven. That's number four, Manny Bostic. James Keenan getting to the um, line quick. And they have timeouts, right? They do. I think they have two. Okay. Bostic once again off the left-hand side. They're yeah. taking it around the corner and in the end zone. Manny Bostic with a, uh, looks like an 11-yard touchdown. Makes our score 34-14, and we got a flag on the play. Was that after the play, Kevin? Well after the play. Okay. Probably a little jaw japping. Personal foul on sportsmanlike conduct called against the Stallions. I figured that. And, again, if you're South Columbus, you really kind of want to get into halftime you know, settle your nerves. You're getting a bit frustrated. You had a good play work for you, and now you're back on the other end of the field. Kevin, I didn't notice a while ago. I guess I was in a daze or whatever. Did they assess that penalty on the kickoff? They did. They did, okay. So that's why South Columbus kicked it deep. I would have kicked it deep too. Whistles blow before the kick. Uh, I thought it did too, Kevin, but it looks like they're going to let them have it. Okay. Okay. Some creative officiating. It's okay. So, 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 so more of that last week, Brett, that East Columbus game, I saw more coaches you know, meeting with officials during the ball game than I saw anything else. I actually heard that. Um, I was coming back from um, North Myrtle Beach and heard you talk about the officials and talking to different people and stuff like that. Seemed like you were getting a little frustrated at the officials. Uh, well, <laughs> had, had a bit of a situation going on at home, Brett. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going I'm to dedicate tonight to my mom. Who's under the weather? Unfortunately, it looks like yeah. you know she is going to probably you know pass maybe sometime next week. And yeah. so, mom always proud of me when I do a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And she was happiest when I did the things I loved. Yeah. And I love doing this on Friday nights with you and with you know, the crew from CCCA. Yeah. So 
Yeah. yeah, I want to give a shout out to mom tonight. Yeah, well, prayers are with you and your family, Kevin. And um, I went through that um, about six months ago, nine months ago with both my parents. And, you know, and everybody has to go through that. But, you know, do what you love. And your mom knew what you loved. And she would rather you be here doing, doing that and what you love. So prayers going out to you and your family, buddy. Much appreciated. I've had a lot of people, you know, just, you know, text me, call, you know, set up smoke <laughs> signals, Facebook message. And really appreciative of all the prayers and love that I've gotten from yeah. from folks. I mean, well, you know, um, I posted on Facebook six years ago today, my, um, my middle child had open heart surgery, and she is doing great. And She's if you had a, a chance to see Brad's Facebook, you got to see that grin. That is one happy that's, young lady. <laughs> that's my glasses, too. She, she don't wear glasses. That's my glasses. She loves them. But, you know, Eat. shout out to um, – And our first you, touchback of the year, How about Brad? that? How about that? Shout out to MUSC for all the things they do in the open heart surgery and stuff like that. Um, I want to tell you something, Brett. Doctors, nurses, first responders, they are heroes. I mean, we, that, that term gets overused in, you know, uh, you know, our lexicon today, but those are true heroes. They are. They definitely are. When I, when I shook the surgeon's hand, you know, I, I just felt I, I shook the hand of somebody really, really special. I mean, not like a, a famous person or what, somebody that really does something, Kevin. Mm-hmm. So here we go, Kevin. You think South Columbus can score here with 48 seconds left? Do you try though, Brett? I, I if mean, I'm if I know Rush Blackwell, he's not going to take a knee. <laughs> Blackwell rolls out to his left, drops back. But, nobody to throw to. Finally finds Get an open receiver. Oh no! Dropped at about the 32. That's the only thing wrong that Gore has done tonight. Um, was drop that pass there. He's had a great night. Um, he's upset himself. He didn't catch that one. But um, kids had a great night so far. Credit Rush Blackwell for the elusiveness. Yeah. You know, gave, gave him every chance to get open. Did take a lot of time off the clock. We're down to 38.7, 38.7 to go here in the first half. And you may want to take a knee here because you don't want the chance of an interception and then return it for a pick six. Probably good call there. Backside counter. Goes out of bounds, though, Brett. Well, I don't think he could sort of help that there, and he probably didn't know the situation that probably – did the clock start? It was 32 seconds to – wasn't it 32 seconds? It was 31-7 when we started, yeah. So the clock didn't run. First down Stallions, though. And the clock didn't run. And the clock didn't run. (laughs) Okay, all right. I didn't know if I was going crazy, but I knew it was 32, and I looked back up again, it was 32 again. It might be Brett and I having a senior moment. We don't know at this point. I don't think it ran, but anyway. I'm not going to say anything. Especially up here in this press see box. if it runs this time. Sure it will. Now that we said something. Yeah, now it's running. Blackwell running for his Run. life. He's Still looking it. to pass to somebody. Go down, go down, go down, go down, go down, go down. Blackwell. Flag, flag on the other side there, Kev. Most likely a hole, Brett. Yeah, when there's that much action, the chances of a hold is really, really high. But on credit, Blackwell takes at least 10 seconds off the clock. I think the last three minutes has been longer than the whole first <laughs> quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I was thinking about something from the concession stand about 20 minutes ago. I'm going to tell you something. Blackwell has run sideline to sideline for about 300 yards tonight. He has gained, he's gained a lot north and south, but a lot more east and west. Holding called against the Stallions. Stallions, once again, in a hole. At this point, being second down, you just go ahead and take a knee. I do, Kev, because, one, you don't want to risk Blackwell getting hurt. And it's really easy to get hurt in plays that you just saw because you don't know who's coming from the backside. Um, He actually um, felt a little pressure coming from the backside, but that's a dangerous situation there. Those junk plays do have a tendency to come back and haunt you sometimes. Inside counter for the Stallions. Ball taken by number eight. Car- Is that eight? Six. Number six, Jaheim Dixon. Also known as Truck. He looks like a truck. Yeah, yeah. His dad has the um, tire and detailing business there on 701 at Williams Township. Go by and check him out. Second down and about six on the uh, – 34-yard line of South Columbus. 
12 points, 7 to go here in the first half. Brett will be joined at halftime by the new South Columbus band director, David Tindall. Okay, awesome, awesome. Stadion Classic coming up once again. It's that time of year, in it? For those of you who are from this area, the Yam Festival coming up, you know, just in a few weeks. Backside counter. There we go. Be careful there. Don't let the clock run out and get to the get to the locker room for for halftime. And it is halftime with our score. James Keenan, the Tigers, 35, South Columbus 13. We'll take a you know a bit of a timeout, listen to the South Columbus High School band, and we'll have David Tindall, the new band director for South Columbus. Here's our halftime interviews. So we'll be right back on 89.9 WZCO and the Columbus County School Social Media Networks. Established the Hall of Fame in 1982 to recognize individuals who make outstanding contributions to interscholastic athletics and the performing arts. The more than 450 inductees represent a truly lasting testimonial to these great American traditions. The NFHS also annually sponsors National High School Activities Month in October to spotlight the individual and collaborative efforts that make sports and performing arts so important in education. Every summer, the NFHS hosts its National Student Leadership Summit, which teaches high school students from around the nation life skills that will assist them throughout their lives. The NFHS also established four associations to meet the needs of individuals who work in specific professional areas. These include associations for athletic coaches, for officials, for music directors, and for speech, debate, and theater coaches. Members of the coaches and officials associations benefit from the education programs offered by the NFHS. The NFHS has developed the nation's leading high school coach education program, including its signature course, Fundamentals of Coaching. Fundamentals of Coaching is interactive and a foundational learning experience for every teacher coach at the interscholastic level. Hi coach, good to have you here. Other educational offerings include the NFHS First Aid for Coaches, created in conjunction with the American Red Cross, along with numerous sports-specific elective and free courses. The NFHS provides officials the tools and skills to conduct fair contests and enhance their careers through an innovative set of online courses, as well as online access to rules and casebooks in a searchable format. In addition to athletics, the nation's high schools also offer equally important performing arts activities, such as music, speech, and debate. The NFHS oversees those programs at the national level. Spirit and competitive cheer are yet another very important component of high school activities programs. The NFHS network celebrates the accomplishments of student athletes in 27 different sports and activities at the national level. Those events can be viewed live on any device, bringing the fan experience anywhere at any time. But the single greatest endorsement for high school activities remains success of the students themselves, the young people who go on to make our communities and our world a better place for everyone. All is a direct result of their involvement in high school athletics and performing arts. We never know behind which doors young people may find the answers they're seeking. That's why so many people are committed to keeping those doors open. Please welcome to the field your South Carolina Opening Hospital doors Hospital to Hospital opportunities, Stallions. to good choices, and to learning. That's what high schools are all about. But an important part of the student's education lies beyond academics, in other kinds of classrooms. The ones called stadiums, gymnasiums, and school auditoriums. Here, the learning comes from interacting with others and from exploring personal limits. These are the doors kept open by member associations of the National Federation of State High School Associations. The NFHS represents more than 19,000 high schools in 50 states and the District of Columbia. Their programs impact the lives of more than 11 million students, as well as their parents, families, and fans. As the national leadership organization for education-based athletic and performing arts activities, the NFHS helps students to develop good citizenship skills and healthy lifestyles and to take part and get set for life. Founded in 1920, 
The NFHS is headquartered in Indianapolis, Indiana, and is governed by a national council composed of one representative from each member association, as well as the board of directors, with members from eight geographical sections of the United States, plus four at-large members. The NFHS sets the direction for interscholastic activities by building awareness, establishing consistent standards and rules for competition, and educating those who oversee high school sports and performing arts. To promote fair play and minimize the risk of injuries, the NFHS writes the playing rules for 17 high school sports. The administrators, coaches, and officials who constitute NFHS rules committees collaborate to develop rules specifically suited for high school competition. They do this through annual rules questionnaire, rules committee meetings, rules review committee meetings, and in-person and online national rules interpreters meetings. This rigorous process is a key reason why high school sports have an excellent record of protecting young people from injury. The NFHS also provides funding for sports injury research through the Authenticating Mark program. Products displaying this mark meet NFHS specifications for high school use, making athletics fairer, more consistent, and less hazardous. In response to concerns about health and risk minimization issues in interscholastic athletics, the NFA.
health and risk minimization issues in interscholastic athletics. The NFHS created the Sports Medicine Advisory Committee. This group meets twice a year to assess risks in all sports and to update the sports medicine handbook. In addition, the NFHS has an ongoing injury surveillance program and collects data from across the country. Of particular note are the proactive efforts of the NFHS in concussion education and management. The athletic trainer said you've done a good job following your return to play protocol since your concussion a couple of weeks ago. Is there a problem? Not with Including that. the acclaimed popular and free online course, Concussion in Sports, What You Need to Know. The NFHS offers many other useful publications, some in print and some online. Its flagship publication, High School Today, is distributed to the superintendent, principal, athletic director, and school board president in every high school in the nation, keeping educators informed about issues related to interscholastic activities. For high school coaches, NFHS Coaching Today okay, is we available are back on here. both the NFHS website yeah, and time, the NFHS and Coach Education website. Other prominent news David Tindall, the brand new band director of South Columbus Court and Field David, Diagram welcome Guide to Southeastern North Carolina and the Forensic Quarterly, and, you know, along Columbus with County the schools, online National High School band. Sports Tell Record. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Richard Tindall. Um, uh, like I said, directors. this is my Sponsored first year with the in South Columbus, but really this is my 17th year teaching. Um, I taught one year in Wayne County, the NFHS Winter Meeting, and I'm here in South Columbus. One of the highlights of the summer really meeting is the National High School Hall of Fame induction ceremony. The NFHS established the Hall of Fame in 1982 This school had a very, very strong program. I wanted to be somewhere where and the performing I could arts. see a program thrive more and that there was support from the inductees community represent a and truly to just be able to build to these great American traditions. have a very, very the NFHS supportive NFHS also annually sponsors here. National High School Obviously, Activities you know, Month in October. Really exciting times coming up for the band program. The collaborative efforts that make sports classic and coming performing up October 22nd, arts so important the Yam Festival in education. Parade, always exciting. Every summer, for those who haven't NFHS been to a high school band National Student Leadership yeah. Summit, talk to us about what it's like you know, for these high school bands to compete. Life oh, it's a great experience. Um, it's a, if you've never been the to a competition, also it's basically like the Olympics of marching of um, who work in specific So, professional for example, areas. with the Stadion Classic, these we have we currently have 12 coaches, bands registered from all over um, the region. Um, and so and they compete speech, all day long coaches. against each other. Um, Members of the coaches and, and officials that sort of thing. associations benefit and, um, from the education programs offered by the know, they, NFHS. They are judged and the NFHS like music, has marching, developed the nation's um, leading high school coach education general program, effect, including that its sort of signature thing. course, and, um, Fundamentals of Coaching. And it's really a great show. I've been able oh, yeah. to play the the last couple of years. It's interactive and, and, and it's, it's a full day of action. for every teacher coach at the interscholastic level. You're going to get to hear great music. and Good to have you here. It's Other really educational great offerings include the NFHS First Aid for Coaches, performing, created you know, in conjunction music. with the American I mean, Red it, Cross, it along with numerous sports-specific oh, yeah. electives yeah, and free courses. For this area the in particular, NFHS there are not many places, not many venues where you can fair get to see and enhance um, their careers marching bands that are really, set of I guess, really courses, celebrated and as well as get online to access to rules involve and the community like that we have here at South. So in that's really athletics, that's really the special nation's for high schools community. also offer it's a lot equally of fun, important like I said, performing arts great activities, bands and, such as music, you know, they're playing speech, level and one, level two music. The NFHS oversees those programs yeah. at so the you, national level. And Kelly Jones Spirit actually was just calling. That was actually him on the phone. Another very Probably important wondering component why he can't hear of high school well, activities so. programs. So. The yeah. NFHS Network celebrates the accomplishments of student athletes in 27 really different sports and you activities about reading, at the national level. Talk to us a about the Those events can be viewed live on With any arts education, it's, the, fan it's the reason why all these other content time. areas matter. But the um, without, without the arts, you know, we can read and write and do math all, the, all day long. But, you know, there has to be some sort of meaning some sort of deeper level like um people have to have some way to um express themselves in some sort of manner and you know the arts education in schools gives a way for kids to express themselves in a in a manner that they don't have in other classes yeah as, as a longtime fan of you know great bands and great music i'm looking forward to it and your first stallion classic 
and I know we're you know folks are looking for a good chance to get to know you and talk to us a little bit about you obviously a, a festival that size is hard to do with just one person talk to us about a, the help from the band booster program oh yeah um Bam Booster program has been great. In fact, we had a meeting, Bam Booster meeting, just last night. Um, had um, several parents out, uh, but it's a it's a large community wide org- organization. It's not only just the uh, Bam Boosters; it's Bam and um, several other organizations within the school community groups. Um, because we have, you know, we have EMS here involved. Just you know, heaven forbid should anything happen during the day. Um, so it's it's a it's a full community effort now if you can't make the stallion classic where are some of the other places we can see the stallion band perform other than friday nights on football games? so um tomorrow will be our first competition at pinecrest high school um next next saturday we'll be performing over at clinton high school um after that will be grace creek high school then we will be at midway high school and also Loris High School. If you get a chance, I mean, these you know student athletes do a great job on Friday nights and during their week. But if you get a chance, come out and see our bands perform. These high school bands perform because every week they're in competition and they do a great job and they work just as hard as our student athletes. So if you get a chance, come out and support these kids when you get the opportunity. Oh yeah, and one of the neat things about it is that you know if you see us week after week, you can see more and more that we keep adding to the show. Um, so, you know, it's, there's some elements that are the same, but you keep seeing us grow as, an, as a group and ensemble. We see that growth within the kids as we go along. All right. We'll be back for a second half action. We'd like to you know, thank you very much for coming up, and we'll see you down the road at the Stallion Classic. All right. Thank you. We'll be right back on 89.9 WZCO in the Columbus County Schools Social Media Networks.
Back to second half action, Brett, and South Columbus kicking the ball off to uh, James Keenan, who seems to have had the ball most of the first half. Yeah, I actually had a chance to walk into the locker room for South Columbus during halftime and was listening to what Coach Dove was telling his players, and it was basically exactly what I said. You know, guys, um, we can score when we want to, but we just got to, you know, be able to keep the ball and, and get the ball out of their hands. So his thing was let's have more – you know, time of possession this half than we did last half. And, you know, very adeptly, the way you, you, know, the way you beat that, East, that James Keenan offense is to keep it on the sideline. And that's exactly right. That's exactly right. But, you know, that's a tough, tough task to do. But, um, you know, South Columbus had put, you know, two touchdowns on, on the board and, you know, had a, had a, um, a fumble that they didn't get. And, um, you know, that was one of the differences in the ball game. Ball covered by number six, Javon Dudley. And Loris will take over first and ten on about their 47. And, again, like I was saying in the first half, when you want to stop James Keenan is right here. This set of downs is the big set of downs for him. South Columbus down 35-13. And, again, every possession going to be at a premium this time you know, in the second half, Brett. But if you're South Columbus, I think – how do you manage to stop that running attack of James Keenan? It's tough. I, I don't see a way for it to happen. Um, you just hope for penalties and you hope for maybe turnovers. South Columbus equal to the task, short three-yard gain. South Columbus, Brad, at that point had eight people in the box. Yeah, and um, <laughs> James Keenan, you know, James Keenan right now up 35-13. They're probably not going to throw it. I mean, you know, you can throw the, the passing game out the door, you know, bring everybody, bring a couple of coaches to try to help out too. But I, I don't know if it's going to stop this um, offensive line for for James Keenan. I think, you know, right now if you're South Columbus, you're almost daring them to throw the ball. So you have no split outs. I mean, Student it's left body and right. right. Yep. And he will take it and he will go. Nice tackle from behind. He, he, he was coming up trying to strip that ball as he come up behind him but just didn't get it. And the James Keenan offense right now, student body left, student body right, student body up the middle. Yep. And, I, I mean, I'd do the same thing if I was James Keenan, if I had 65, 56, 77, all those boys on my um, offensive line too. You know what, we've given the running backs and the quarterback a great deal of credit for the James Keenan offense. But, you know, sometimes, you know, our unsung heroes of the night, you know, is that James Keenan offensive line? Yeah, I guarantee you go to the um, to the buffet bar there, and they just clear it out, brother. Backside counter to number one, N Josh untouched. Mitchell goes untouched into the end zone. It's Mitchell. hard to stop, Kevin. I mean, not much you can do if you're South Columbus at this point. Just you know, you're being out physical at the man point of attack. To the tune of about 100 pounds. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you 100%. I mean, um, James Keenan, um, you know, we thought coming in here that, it, you know, James Keenan maybe weren't what they were cracked up to be, but we're, we're seeing right now that, that they're for real. <laughs> I mean, maybe they took that, you know. They heard what you said, Kevin, and they're like, we're going to show him. <laughs> Kick, extra point is up, and it is good. Our score James Keenan, 42, South Columbus, 13. and The yeah. conference that they're in, Kevin, is a, a really good conference from top to bottom. There's not a bad team in the conference that they're playing in, and um, they're used to playing this high level of football. You know, you come over here to to the Waccamaw Conference, and, and, and I'm not talking down about the Waccamaw Conference, but our conference does not, you know, stand up to – that big power conference up around Clinton areas like that. There are good teams like in the Waccamaw, Brett, but I don't know if we're as deep as some of these other power conferences. Yeah, yeah. you got your Clintons, you know, your James Keenan, your East Duplin. I mean, they're, they're just big powerhouse football teams that reload every year. All the way down from Duplin County, I mean, they're getting their money's worth tonight. Yeah, two-hour drive um, from what I heard. Um, Warsaw, is that Warsaw? I don't think I've ever been to Warsaw. I think it's out by Keenansville. Okay. After I've been on, through Keenansville. Out there on 40. I got a ticket through Keenansville one time when I was at East Carolina. you got a ticket just about everywhere, haven't you? Well, no, I've only had about three. There's in the end zone again. That's the Touchback. 
Actually, but everybody was nice in Kenansville. I was coming home on a Friday afternoon from East Carolina and was um, not paying attention, going 140 and a 55. And um, I know, Chuck, it's, it's amazing you can do that in a 78 <laughs> Pinto. <laughs> but um, I was able to square everything. I think that's actually the last ticket I've ever had. I don't think I've had one in the last 25 years. Knock on wood, Kevin. Yeah, it's amazing he can do that in a station wagon. I know, especially when you're sitting in the back facing the oncoming traffic. There you, go. <laughs> you remember that country squire back in the day? Oh, yeah, baby. Here we go. South Columbus, Rush Blackwell back in the shotgun. Person down to 20. Low snap, takes it himself off to the right-hand side. Blackwell picking up good yardage. He's got a blocker out in front. Blackwell. Got a blocker out in front. the length of he the He may be field. there. Oh, and he Just. lost his footing, but that's okay. Blackwell with a Looks like he had a 65, 66-yard run. Blackwell comes back and says, I'll show you what I got. Blackwell from the 20 down to about the 13. So that's 37 and 30, a 67-yard run. He got tripped up by the turf monster here on about the 20. That's that one one tall blade of grass Russell Dub couldn't get with Must the lawnmower. Must have been. Must have been. A nice run. I'm, he, I'm sure he's out of breath. <laughs> He's like, I think we can milk this clock a little bit here. Now you, looks like they're going to him again. Empty backfield. Going to give it to the jet sweep. Jet sweep cuts up inside. Oh, face mask looked like to me. There we go. They got it. When his head turns, Kevin, you know that's yeah. a face mask. That, that's kind of what I was wondering. Brett and I can call it from up here. Yep. Brown got a whole lot of the run of gore, but he also got a whole lot of face mask. They waved it off? No way. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, I heard the public address on that one. I don't even think they believed it. Oh, my. He blew that one. Oh, my gosh. The kid's head turned around. And he said he grabbed him on the jersey. And just remember, we need more high school officials. So, <laughs> yeah, if you saw the same thing we did – Please apply to become a high school official in the state of North Carolina. Yeah, that was that wasn't was something. Good. That wasn't good. Inside counter. Gets about most of that yardage back. I think they got it about the, there to the 15, Kevin. Looks like they got the first down. No, it's, uh, it's going to be short. Third down. Okay, third down. No, because you got two sticks there, Brett. Okay, my fault. Oh, my fault. Third and 12. I only saw that one bull's eye over there, Kevin. Sorry. My peripheral vision must be dwindling. You know what it is? You spent one too many, you know, one too many times having tea parties last weekend. You must have. Two, two down territory for South Columbus. Need to get back in this ball game and make, you know, at least get into the 20s. Blackwell rolls to his left. Throws. Ooh, almost, almost intercepted. There was two receivers in the same position there, so I'm assuming that one of these receivers ran the wrong route. Fourth down, Brett. What do you call you need two sticks and almost a touchdown to get a first down? I like um, Rush going out into the flats. Finding receiver, overload receivers on the left side and see if he can pick one up. And if they're covered, pull it down and, and, and head for pay dirt. That's my call, but we'll see what happens here. Twins left for the Stallions. Blackwell back to pass, rolls to his right, gets away from one tackler, pulls it down, yeah. and just, get, just gets popped by number 17. Well, he, he had to roll to the side that had the least number of receivers. If he'd have rolled to the other side, he had had some more receivers and more options there. But just the options weren't there, Kevin, and um, James King is going to take over on downs. Eli Bosta gets the credit, but it's a coverage sack for the for the Tigers. 9.21 to go here in the third quarter. South Columbus looking at the long end of the scoreboard, but credit the Stallions, Brett, they're still, you know, still playing hard. They are. They are, Kevin. They're not um, holding their head any at all. And um, Like I said, they want to get one stop at least on James Keenan. They hadn't stopped James Keenan all night. You hadn't seen James. James Keenan probably don't even have a punter, to tell you the truth. Student body right. Yep. 
And it's, like I said, six and seven yards every time. And give credit to the um, offensive line of James Keenan, just outweighing every one of South Columbus's players at least by 70, 80 pounds. South Columbus, use, you know, usually, Brett, you know, traditionally, let's say traditionally, are on the other side of that. Unfortunately, the years of South Columbus being in that oversized offensive and defensive line has, you know, transitioned the last couple of years. We'll blame it on COVID, Kevin. you got to blame something on COVID, so it's got to be called tonight. And it looks like another seven, eight, nine-yard gain for James Keenan. Hassan Cornegay, that big fullback. Culliper with the, set, with the tackle, 8.40 to go here in the third quarter. And with the amount of runs we're about to see, Brett, I have a feeling it's going to be a quick second half. Yeah, it may be. Right. you got to get, what, 42-point lead for a running clock? 40, 44, I think. 44, okay, 44. First and 10, Tigers ball in about the 44. Wow. <laughs> End up up the middle, and he is going a long way, Brett. And I think that's their fullback too, right? 23? 23, and that is Marcus Baden. It says tackle and defensive end. Did they hand it off to the to the tackle? Because I knew eligible, baby. I knew he was running really, really slow. Do you think there was a fumble there up the middle? I don't I don't think Brett that uh, you know. I don't know. Well, maybe a replay there if we could get one, but looked a little funky. Funky Cole Medina right there. Great 80s reference. There you go. A little tone low. <laughs> and that one I knew. Okay. 12 up the middle, 7, 8, 9 yards. Slayton, Slayton Smith. Smith. We haven't called his name, but he is actually the quarterback. Yep. Quiet night for Smith, but effective. They've had a lot of direct snaps tonight. I mean, credit, credit James Keenan, Brett. They're not fancy. They're not, you know, doing a lot of misdirection. It's just we're bigger than you are, and prove to, you, prove to us you can stop us. Yep. That's what they're doing. Twenty-three. Based and in for the touchdown. That's that defensive end and tackle again. Fourteen-yard touchdown for. Uh, Baysden and not a lot of answers, you know, for South Columbus tonight. Just, you know. Outmatched. Outman. Out, outman. Outman. And you can, account, you can account for a lot of things. You can scheme a lot of things, Brett, yeah. but you can't account for an entire team that's about a half a foot taller and tonight, about 20 pounds Tonight, it's heavier. not about the X's and O's. It's about the Jimmy's and Joe's. Oh, that's deep. Yeah. That's yeah. deep. So you, you can use that if you want to. X's and O's doesn't do it tonight. It's the Jimmy's and Joe's. So, you know, if you get a chance, put that on a bumper sticker, send that to me and Brett, because we want to market some things. Uh, got some scores right now. Final, North Brunswick 21, Laney 7. East Columbus uh, 49, Jones 7 at halftime. Uh, Clinton 48, East Bladen 7 into third. In the fifth inning, Philadelphia 8, Atlanta 0. That's it. What's up with that? The Braves down 8-0. to zero. They're in contentions to win the um, NL East going against the Mets. And um, and the Braves have been dropping a couple of games here. Um, the Braves have already clinched at least a wild card spot or a playoff spot, um, but vying for um, a first-round bye or a, um, a first series bye. Um, looks like the Mets are, may take that one because we're down to, I think, about – Six or seven games left. Aaron Judge trying to get his home run record for the Yankees. Try to beat Roger Maris's um, home run record. Um, so some good things happening. Albert Pujols trying to get his 600. Here we go. Kickoff. James Keenan kicks it deep. Looks like Jaheim Dixon on the reception. Trying to go up the middle. Flushed out to the left side. Breaks a couple of tackles. Goes down about the 25-yard line. These, these East Columbus, the South Columbus running backs really run hard, but traditionally they've always, I mean, run, and they've, they've been coached and well-taught to finish off runs. Yep, they do. They're, they're actually punishing 
kids, uh, even though they're a lot smaller than the other team, they're, they're, they're giving some punishment to these tacklers by James Keenan. First and ten, Stallions ball on about the – well, keep walking backward. Did that say 49 to 7 at halftime? East yep. Columbus over Jones? Yep. Wow. East Columbus looking to get their first uh, two-game winning streak in, I think, about six or seven years. Wow. First and ten, Stallions ball on about the 26. Stout play up the yeah, middle. there. I want to give out a shout out to um, my tennis team here at South Columbus. We Heard they um, had a big win this week, Brent. Yeah, we um, um, had were fortunate enough to beat Whitewell six to three and take sole possession of the um, Waccamaw Conference. Um, got a makeup game with East Columbus this week, um, so you know girls are playing really well. Eight and zero, you know, really overachieving what I thought possibly we would. We lost three really good players last year, but we've had some some really good players to step so, in. So answer the question, Brett. Are they winning because of you or in spite of you? I think they're winning because they're scared of me. Ah, could be. <laughs> you are intimidating. Michael well, back to pass. He'll go deep. That's inter- oh, I thought it was going to be intercepted. Just tipped out of the range of the receiver. Great you know, play by the secondary number 11, uh, Xavier Boone. Otherwise, South Columbus would have had a long game. Now it's third and 11 for South Columbus. We go into our tennis matches with the expectation of winning every game. I mean, that that's that's – what we tried to instill over my years of, of coaching is, you know, to expect to win. And, um, you know, I've had a lot of good years of coaching basketball, softball, and, and stuff like that. And I'm actually thinking about um, deciding whether this is going to be my last one, you know, as a high school coach. I've given, you know, 19 years, three varsity sports, and then the rest of it with two. So, you know, contemplating some new things. Now, Brett knows as well as I do – Nice pass to the outside. Throwback pass. Throwback pass. Picks up, takes it out of bounds at about the Late 40, hit. And we got a late hit out of bounds. And we'll yep. go from the 48 over to the South Columbus side of the field. Jaheim Dixon there getting his name in the newspaper. Yeah. Brett, Brett knows as well as I do. High school coaching is a lot like the mafia. Never say never, Brett. Well, you know. Kevin, in my situation, you know, family comes first. I love South. I love teaching, and but family comes first. And when you've got three little ones at home that are going all different directions, you got to start focusing on some different things. But you know, South Columbus is not putting their head down here, Kevin. You know, they're still fighting in the game. They're not looking at the scoreboard. You know, they could care less about forty-eight to thirteen. They're high school kids coming out here and having fun, and they want to give a hundred percent, no matter how far they're down. And the upside of this spread is, this game has nothing to do with the conference race. Everything's right. still in front of South right. Columbus. And you've gotten some good things to build on. The passing game is looking pretty good for South Columbus tonight. Um, Rush Blackwell has had, had a really good night. Um, Demonte Gore has had a really good night. If, if you're looking at South Columbus on what possibly they need to um, to improve on, you got to look at the defensive side of the ball. And, you know, are we as, you know, South Columbus, are we going to be able to make stops in this walk mall conference? And, you know, that, that's the biggest thing that they probably got to work on now. And a 6'7 transfer student who weighs about 300 pounds. Yeah, that <laughs> would, would be do nice. Good too. That would be nice. First and 10 stallions ball on the Tiger 27, 28 yard line. Just over the head of the receiver. Yeah. Be second down. If he'd have put a little bit more touch on that, made it a little bit more softer, Kevin, probably the receiver would have a, a better chance of catching that ball. But that, that was a dart coming out of a shotgun there. And that, that's, that's really tough for a receiver on that slide route to make a catch on. South Columbus offense, to its credit, Brett, has been able to move the ball up and down the field. It's just a mistake here, uh, you know, a blown assignment here. You know, or just, you know, they're, they're a play or two away from really putting together some really good offense. How South Columbus punted? Once. No, actually, I take that back. Yeah, they did punt It was once. over his head, though. Uh, yeah. So, it weren't no. an actual punt. So, zero. Zero punts, right? Or did he actually? No, no there was one punt. Okay, okay. The, right. fir- the first one was fumbled. The second one was punted. Okay, all right. Got you. Face mask called. And it'll take a... Loss into a 15-yard gain for South Columbus in the South Columbus first down. Unless they 
you know, wave it off because, you know, we've seen this crew wave it off. Personal foul. Personal foul. Face mask is the call. 524 to go We're here in the third quarter, Brett, and South Columbus need, needs some good things to happen. I mean, you keep, not a lot to take away from the score, but if you're South Columbus, you need some breaks, you need some things to go your way to build on and practice next weekend for the conference season down the road. Yeah, because you want to be able to think, put it in your kid's head that, you know, we can score 28 or so points off of a James Keenan, which is a, you know, conference contender and stuff like that. So, so they're, they're building up their offense, and, and it would be really good for South Columbus if they could build on their defense and make a stop. First and 10 stallions, they'll take the ball over on the 16, between the 16 and 17-yard line. First and 10. Wholesale, wholesale reverse of the field by the James Keenan defense. Blackwell back to pass once again. Swing pass, almost intercepted and almost caught, but it'll go for naught and it'll be second and 10. Again, that's a, a pass there that, you know, had, 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 some, had some heat on it there, Kevin. Um, and you got to expect that from um, from Rush Blackwell. He's going to throw a dart in there, too, and you got to be ready for that as a receiver. Blackwell throwing a fastball, almost gets yeah. it intercepted and completed at the same time. Yeah, I thought about him playing baseball there with, with making that pass. But that's a pass that um, a receiver's got to make, though. Also dangerous, he could have gone the other direction. Second and ten, Stallions ball on the seventeen. That's going to be Stop illegal the motion on the back to the left side. He came off the line before the ball was snapped. Again, you know, two steps forward, one step back for South. And you get the idea that they're close to putting it together, and if they do, they're going to be a tough out in the, in the conference race. Second and a bunch for the Stallions. Ball now placed on about the 22-23. Is it just me or is this, you know, 520 have lasted a long time? It has. It seems like the first parts of the quarters go fast. The second parts of the quarters go really, really slow. Or either that I'm ready to get home and get on the couch. <laughs> One or the other. Yeah, Brett's got the 10-minute ride, y'all. I've got the 45-minute yeah, ride. That's true. That's true. You're welcome to stay at the house, Kevin. I would, but your daughters won't let me play with their toys. <laughs> Blackwell somehow finds a way to pick up a yard or two before being taken down and by those linebackers who strung that thing out well. But they're, they may be asleep, so you make him play with them when they're asleep. There you go. With the toys. They got plenty of them, though. Now, inquiring minds want to know, Brad, at a 48-13 score, have we looked at Halloween costumes yet? Because we're just now about to get into October. Uh, yeah, the well. <laughs> Talking about Halloween costumes started about four months ago at my house, <laughs> about what they're going to be and stuff like that. But we haven't really gotten serious about now, it. Now, if Brett's at Walmart, he's got his Halloween shopping done, his Thanksgiving shopping done, and his Christmas shopping done yep, at this one. Yep. And the Hall uh, Halloween costumes are a lot different than what they were when me and you were going. You remember you'd get the little box and you'd have the mask on top and have, like, the little cape yeah. under it? Oh, it's a whole lot different now. I mean, you're getting in a, a whole wardrobe kind of thing these days. So, are you going to keep us in suspense, or do we have some ideas yet? I, you know, I've heard so many that I cannot actually remember some of the ones they were talking about. And, and they're, they're the kind of kids that, like, like one of them wants to dress up as an Indian. One of them wants to dress up as a cowboy. They're not big into um, you you know, know superheroes and stuff like that. Do we have the fairy princesses and the ballerinas yet? We used to have that. We used to have that. So, I, I, don't, I don't know if they're going to go that route this year or not. Now, do um, you and Sean dress up along with the girls? You know, I dress up as every year. A coach. <laughs> <laughs> I wear my whistle. <laughs> I dress up as a grumpy old man. I have <laughs> dressed up before with them, um, and Sean enjoys dressing up with them also. Um, I think one year I wore my Patriots jersey or something like that, but as in really getting into it, I've never really gotten into now, the dressing do you guys, up. Do you guys do the tr traditional trick-or-treat, or do you do the trunk-or-treat now? Uh, we um at Cherry Grove Baptist Church. That's where we go to church and invite everybody to Cherry Grove if, if if you're looking for a church. But um we do the trunk or treat over there, and um and then we will go to maybe some close friends or family's house, you know, to get some candy. And we also go to the ones that knows that we know's got really good candy too. Third and fifteen for the Stallions. 
pumps once, back to pass, skips one in, incomplete, and it'll be fourth down and 15. You know, that was a, that was a really good play there. It looked like the slant through the middle. He just, you know, threw it down in the dirt in front of him, and nothing was there. But, um, you know, you're going to see another pass here. I don't know what, maybe a waggle pass coming out the backfield, something like that. I noticed, I think that was Cox with the pass. Oh, was it? Daquan yeah. Cox in. Is Cox back in now, or is that Blackwell? I believe that's Cox. That's Cox. Okay, let's hope that Blackwell is hey, for not a guy hurt. With, for a guy with two bad eyes, I'm pretty impressed yeah. I thought it. I'm hoping that Blackwell is not hurt. So deep over the middle, up, and no good. It'll be taking over on downs. First and ten for the Tigers, ball on about the 21. Let's see, can, can you find um, Rush Blackwell on the field anywhere, on the sideline? What number is he, Kevin? Blackwell is 15. 15. Let's see. Trying to see if I can see. Oh, he's over here to the left. Like I said, when you, when you see your quarterback take two snaps off, you, you sort of worry, is there something maybe happening or whatever? Maybe but, a change of pace or – Well, I'm telling you, you know, 48-13, you got conference coming up, you, you know – you can tell Rush all night long to relax and chill, but you know once he gets out there on yeah, that field, he's not going to. Yeah, absolutely. So that might be the best best way to protect him over there, because you know, as you say many times in our broadcast, the outcome is not in doubt. Mm -hmm. So you know, putting him over there and relaxing. Now he is looks like he is limping a little bit here, so I'm, again, I'm assuming he's going to be done for again, the night. Maybe more preventative than anything. Yeah. 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 So I mean, if he was my quarterback, he would be done for tonight, knowing I'm getting ready to start playing conference. Zalea with the direct snap picks up about six or seven. And once again, you know, this James Keenan offense, just slow and methodical, slow and steady wins the pace. Yeah. See, um, Bo Kenlaw getting a bunch of snaps on the defensive line this week for um, the Stains. Good to see him out there. Student body left. And that's Cornegy, I believe. I mean, that kid runs hard, and he's a hoss to bring down. Actually, that's Zalea. i tell you who you need to interview next week. Robbie Lee. Staying coach, been here for years, heart of the program. There's only one problem with your theory. What's that? We're doing White Bill in East Columbus. Yeah, okay, so well, he might come over there just for that. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll catch him on the, on the flip South, side of it. Who is South Columbus playing? Whew. Man, you're going to put me on the spot there. Yeah. Now, two weeks we have South Columbus at West Columbus in a, re in a rematch of that thriller from last year, yeah. Brett. Just hard to stop him, isn't it, Kevin? Zalea once again with, the, with about a seven-yard gain, 2.40 to go here in the third quarter. And it seems like these last three minutes have taken a long time, Brett. Yeah, you know, and it is because South Columbus has resorted to a lot more passing, so that slows it down a lot. But, you know, when James Kenning gets the ball in their hand, you know what they're going to do. They're going to run the ball and um, run as much time as they can off the clock. So it's going to go really fast when, when James Keenan has the ball. Tight formation up to the line. High snap. South Columbus almost gets it. Recovered by James Keenan. <laughs> He's like, what was that? Yeah. I was I'm, I was trying to figure out what the play was because um I mean there was a bunch of um linemen downfield looked like they were gonna try to block some kind of like little pass play yeah. or something. You you had two tight wings, a fullback and your tailback within like two yards of the ball and the snap went thirty seven yards back. What do you call that formation, Kev? A mess. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's a name for that. For I know it looks like a wing with it's a fullback a, up the. It's a jumbo the formation. We'll the call tackle's jumbo. butt. I don't know. It's like the the um the tailback looks like he's got his head up the tackle's butt. So I don't really know what you call that. And that's a visual I don't think we need. Who called timeout? James Keenan. Really? James Keenan timeout. The one twenty-two to go here in the third quarter, up by thirty-five and. Well, they need a timeout, Kevin. They know what they're going to do. <laughs> 30, third and 15 in the first real, you know, adversity they've, they've had. Well, that's the first, really about the first miscue they've had. South is at Pender next week, Brett. And <laughs> I 
Franklin Davis, home, you know, threatening to dress up as me. <laughs> and I can tell you, if Franklin does, he will have never looked so good. Yep. Um, South Columbus opens up at Pender next week. Pender, no slash. I believe they have. How are they doing this week? I don't know. We didn't get a Pender score, I don't think. But again, Franklin Davis. I, I think I want to go with Franklin Davis. You know, for Halloween. No, no one could dress up as the great Franklin Davis. The the dean of sportscasting right. here in Columbus County. That's right. I want to thank him for coming out and covering our tennis match last week. Good to see him out there. Good, good to talk to him. And I can tell you, when it comes to Franklin, Franklin has forgotten more about Columbus County sports than Brett or I even know. That's exactly right. Somehow, some way. What's the What's the chances that we can get him to go to the game and we interview him at halftime? Slim to none. Maybe I mean, if we're going to be in East Columbus, maybe a sausage dog, maybe a funnel cake. Yeah, yeah. It is, is East Columbus got the sausage dogs going on this year? I believe West Columbus. West does. Columbus, okay. They got pork. They had pork chop sandwiches last time too. Okay. Uh, Franklin says zero chance. Okay, so I figured that. That's okay. Friends. You know, fans of our broadcast, if you want to see Franklin Davis, let's start a petition right now. Let's get Franklin Davis on at halftime. But I'll tell you what, I, I think I'm going to be like Franklin Davis when I retire. I think I'm going to give it up, and I'll probably give it all up for good because, you know, it's just a, it's a part of your life for so long, Kevin. And then you just make that decision that you've given all that time and all that energy to the schools and the kids, and sometimes it's just good to just sit back and, and take – time for yourself and I can understand exactly where he's coming from. Franklin Davis and retired, I don't think go together, Brett. No, no, he's never retired, but you know, he he's he's just <laughs> he, changed focuses. He's just not getting he's just not coming out out of the house as much. Yeah. He's probably tired of us talking about it. So let's get back to the football <laughs> game here. Direct snap again to number fourteen straight up the middle, which is Ty Crease Wilson. Gains about what, six yards for the first down? Soleil hasn't had a chance to show much speed, but I swear to goodness, he just yep. he does not go down on first contact. I would really love to see South Columbus make a stop, though. I mean, that's just something that would be big defensively for them. That looks to be the last play of the third quarter, Brett. We'll end, you know, we'll end three with the Stallions down 48-13, and South Columbus, you know, it may, you know, it may be cliche, but a moral victory here would be a stop, and – would be something to hang your hat on going into conference play. Do you remember the teams that um, James Keenan has played this year? Do you remember the names of the teams? I believe they played East Duplin and okay. – let me pull it up here. Who did they – they lost somebody, right? Yes, sir. Who they? you have any idea who they lost to? I saw it this morning. Was it East Duplin? It may have been East Duplin, which is coached by um, Battle Holly, which used to um, – which used to be an assistant coach here under his dad, Jack Holly, back when I coached football. I was fortunate enough to coach under the, the great Jack Holly my first years here at South Columbus. Some of the best years of my life. <laughs> he was a, a coach that when you practiced in the summer, you had to be there at 8 o'clock in the morning and you didn't leave till 8 o'clock that night. And I wasn't – listen, I'm, I'm coming from Williams Township School, which did not play any football. So it was, it was a major change for me. But it gave me my love for, you know, high school football and, and South Columbus. We change ends of the field here, and James Keenan's going to take over on the stallion 35-yard line with first, first and 10, 12 off the left side. We'll take it all the way to about the 10-yard line. Pushed out of bounds at the 10-yard line. That's Xavier Boone. No. Don't have a name. Okay, here we go. Uh, they led off the season with a win against Aiden Grifton, 69-21. Then they beat Dixon, 43-3. They defeated Eastern Wayne, 46-26. And they lost to East Duplin, 21-14. Okay, yeah. Cause, now, I'm, I'm sure that East Duplin, James Keenan, game was a really, really good game because that's two premier programs on the East. Just grinding. I think he's in, Kevin. He is up and he is in. Is that 
15. 15. Zalea. It's either Zalea or Cornegay or, I mean. They got them all. And I'm not seeing a lot of dirty jerseys right now. No, that white has stayed white about all night. But like I said, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, sometimes it rains. And sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. That's exactly right. And, you know, South Columbus offensively has some good things to to look toward defensively, you know, especially playing this James Keenan team has looked not up to par tonight. Extra but, point is up and good. Our score is down 54-13, a 41-point uh, – sorry, yeah, a 42-point lead for James Keenan at this point with 11.37 to go here in the game. But, again, you know, it, it just goes – it goes back to size. I mean, it, that's exactly what it is. I mean, you're South Columbus, you're outmanned 70-some pounds at each position, and it, it's, it's hard to stop offensive lines that push you seven, eight, nine yards down the field. I mean, yeah. We just got, yeah, got, got to feed these boys a little more. Moms, dads, at your feeder programs. Make sure you feed these boys. Eleven twenty-six to go, and I do believe we got a running clock, Brett. Here we go. Again, you know, South Columbus, nothing to hang their head. Yeah, you know, they're playing against quality competition, Brett. Granted, they're taking their lumps early, but that, that's got to serve you well. You know, talk to us about the importance of scheduling these rough non-conference matchups. Well, like I said earlier, um, you want to schedule. Like you, you know, as a coach, that when you play somebody that's better than you, that you get better quicker. Um, like I was talking to Bobby Godwin, you know, about the forfeit that um, West Columbus had. I don't really think that hurts them all that much because it's a team that they were probably going to destroy anyway and probably wouldn't get any positives out of it. But you get positives out of this because you've played the really good teams and you have the opportunity now of, of doing better once you reach these, these conference foes. South Club gets the ball in their own 15. Again, running clock. Be first and 10. Stallions going from right to left. Okay, Brett, it's – Obviously, it's out of reach, you know, score-wise. Do you leave your starters in and hoping to make some, you know, good strides towards next week? Or, well, you, you, know, know, you know, what do you do? You know, it's funny, Kevin. When you look at this South Columbus sidelines, there's not a lot of the kids that you can go to. I mean, when you talk about taking your starters out, you know, you're looking like you only got about 26 kids on, on the team. So there's not many things you can choose from and try to, you know, take away from. Um, Straight up the middle goes South Columbus, picks up about 10. Looks like we will make it a first down stallion. But you do notice that Rush Blackwell is still on the sidelines, and that's um, hopefully a precautionary. Um, and, and it's good for um, Daquan to um, come out here and get some snaps under center in case something does happen to um Rush Black will during the year. Again, a lot of football gets to be played only in week six. Uh-oh. Around the right-hand side he goes. Looks like he's, he's got it. He's going. Oh, wow. whoa, way. He turned it on. Even, hey, and he's got a parachute coming out the back slowing him down. <laughs> DeMonte Gore right there again, right? Caught his name many, many times tonight. Looks like about a 70-yard touchdown for DeMonte Gore. It's like he took that thing in um, – Got to the side there, was in fourth gear, and he said, let me shift this thing into overdrive. He picked up another gear about halfway down the field, where he looked behind him and said, wait a minute. <laughs> sure did. Hey, the, flag, uh, the, the towel in the back didn't slow him down a bit. Wind resistance. 55-19 or score. So these, those are the kinds of things that you can build on if you're South Columbus. You can say, we did these things right, and we're going to be able to use those plays against the, the White Wolves and the Penders and the Trash and the East Columbuses and the West Columbuses. Um, that's the way you build up your, your team there. Back Slant back. pattern over the middle. Yeah, up, and it is no Ooh, good. Oh, just knocked out there at the last. And I'll, t and I'll tell you something, Brett. You know, South Columbus scoring 19 here realistically had an opportunity for at least two more scores. So this could be about a 55-30 ball game. The clock's not supposed to be run, but it is. So. 
Right. At this point, I don't think you're going to get much complaint from either yeah, side. Probably not. Probably not. Pender with a two-hour bus ride coming up, mm-hmm. and really probably nowhere good to eat between here and wherever they live. It's 20 minutes to 10, Britt, and I don't think you're going to find much open. <laughs> no. Although I do, you know, you know, suggest you stop at that Dunkin' Donuts in Whiteville. Yeah, and I heard that White was getting the um, Starbucks. Starbucks. Wow. Saw that in the news reporter this week. My daughter. <laughs> My daughter's never had Starbucks in her life. She's nine years old. But the power of advertising makes her want Starbucks every time we go buy one. And I'm like, dude, we ain't buying no $7 coffee. I love you. No, no. If you want to take her somewhere, Brett, take her to the Crazy Mason. We those have. gourmet milkshakes. I swear to God, those milkshakes are taller than Indiana and Piper put together. I've tried to put that behind me because <laughs> I have experienced the Crazy Mason um milkshakes i got me a regular when it was good but they came back with one with like cheeseburgers on top yep. and um the it ones was like, i saw they had two donuts stacked on yeah, top. 16 dollars, and i'm like really <laughs> but anyway something you should always go to is, is pretty cool but i'm just a simple person i got a regular milkshake but they got them with hamburgers and donuts and whatever on top of them final score over in the swamp east columbus 63 jones 7 I, very, you know, very good game by East Columbus there, getting a, a big win, 63-7. East Columbus, 63, Jones, 7, final. A lot of football, you know, and White, White Bill is playing, I believe, playing tonight. No, White Bill's off. White, White Bill's off. got their open week tonight. West Columbus had the forfeit win against Sand Hills, which if you haven't heard about, the game was rescheduled so Sand Hills can get more players earlier in the season, and they called this week and said, "Oh, we have a scheduling conflict; we can't play." So South, Col- uh, sorry, West Columbus, actually decided to go ahead and pick pick up the forfeit win there. Might be when they couldn't get a driver or something. I've heard I've heard not being able to get a driver the most over the last two weeks. If I've ever heard that. If you want to make some money right now, be a, <laughs> yeah, I be mean, a be a bus driver. I guess. I always thought that if you're a coach, you always had your bus license, but evidently that's not the way it is anymore. I think we got away with that, and we got bit with that with COVID. Yeah. 5.20 to go off running clock. South Columbus down 55-19. It's like the crowd's cleared out pretty much here at um, South Columbus. Thinning out. And it may be because it's chilly, you know. I heard, Brett, it's going to be about 45-50 tomorrow morning. Woo. Well, I do need to get a little bit of yard work done, so maybe it won't be quite as bad tomorrow. Now, now are you raking the leaves? Because you know, you know, as a young girl and a young boy, playing and running through those leaf piles is, you know, a lot of fun. I could tell you some stories about that when I used to have to um, rake my parents' yard. That was one of the the um, chores that I had to do. My mom did not believe in letting a leaf stay on the ground. She was one of them ones you better get out there and catch it before it touches the ground. But what I would do, Kevin, I would go out there and rake as much as I could, and I would pretend that the leaves are alien eggs, and I have to get them in the ditch and get them burned before they take over the world. And, and just think, this man is responsible for the <laughs> minds of young, <laughs> of yeah. high school children. Well, you know what? You, you, sometimes you try to make work a game to make it easier and faster. And well, I, I call it productivity, finding a easier way out, but the better word is productivity. Hey, whatever makes the work go faster. What is that? A spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down? Yep. Is that going to be delay a game for? No, timeout for James Keenan. Timeout with 3.59 to go. Game almost over, Brett. Yep. And looking ahead, what is coming up next week in in South Columbus? Uh, we have volleyball playing um, East Columbus next week, um, which is going to be a big conference game. Um I'm not sure if the White Bull South Columbus game is next week. Um, you know, the, the volleyball team at um, South Columbus is, well, the JV team's undefeated. The varsity team has only lost one, and they're look like they're going to vie for another conference And you're getting to the point where it's almost benchmark time, isn't it? Uh, yeah, actually, we um, we had a um, PLC this week on benchmarks and how we were going to do them. And since we're our curriculums are brand new at South Columbus with the financial literacy and the new um, – um, civics class, um, we're having to come up with some new questions for our benchmarks and, you know, testing our kids to see what they've learned. You know, knock on wood, Kevin, um, one of the best years I've had to start out so far, the COVID is getting out of the kids. 
Gotcha. The kids are working a lot harder than that what they did a year or two, two years ago. So, um, you know, kudos out to um, South Columbus students, and I'm hoping that's the way it is um, all over the county. Um, the kids, the kids want to come back and and they want to have some structure, and and that's what's happening at our place. Play strung out. It's going to be fourth and about a long seven for James Keenan. South Columbus might get that first might stop. Might get there. that stop here. And uh, here's the thing that should be interesting, you, Brett. Students over at CCCA, where I am, we actually took our benchmarks this week. Mm -hmm. And two weeks from today is the end of the first nine weeks at the early college. Wow. Wow. I was, I was thinking about that today. Um, on my Google Classrooms, I do, you know, grades by weeks and stuff like that. And we're beginning the fifth week. Per Franklin Davis, South Columbus at Whiteville Volleyball next Thursday, okay. both undefeated in varsity volleyball. Okay. I knew it was coming up pretty quick. And if you've ever had a chance to go to one of those games – I used to love when I was assistant principal of South Columbus going and watching White Bell and South Columbus battle in volleyball. It didn't matter what the records were. It was always, yeah, always packed and always great volleyball. And, and, and Whiteville brings a big crowd. South Columbus, the students show up. It gets rowdy in the gym, you know, at volleyball games, um, especially against Whiteville. Um, Going to be a good time. Um, come out and see them at, at South Columbus, no, at Whiteville. Um, Thursday. And I'll tell you, what's interesting is David Marlowe, now the grand old man of coaching volleyball here in Columbus County, yep. you know, Olivia Scott down at West Brunswick now, and one of his protégés, Madison Spencer at West, and mm -hmm. at East Columbus you have Jenny Yarbrough who used to work with Franklin. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, uh, her, her daughter, Maddie. Ooh, you better. <laughs> That'll wake you up. Who was that right there? Number five, what? Kendrick's a lay a, laid a lick. Weldon Gore yeah, made Weldon that kick. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. And that's a hit of a clean your sinuses. Weldon said, Coach, you know I can catch it. I did it all week, last week and the week before. So, um, And then we have um, two tennis matches at South Columbus, um, soccer match. Um, and we actually got our new video boards. We're getting – we got new doors here at South Columbus this week, new safety doors. Talk to us a little bit about on. that. You know, how does that work, and, you know, what's the importance of having these new doors? Well, the importance is is there's telling us that it will alert us if a door is open. Um, it will alert us if somebody propped it open and stuff like that. You know, it, it's, it's a big safety thing, and we're big on safety. Um, we do have metal detectors going into our school for – the safety of kids and stuff like that. And we want to make sure that the kids are safe when they come to school. South Columbus around the right-hand side. Wow, how'd he get out of that? You know, Mom, where'd he go? And Allison Edwards, another Marlowe protege over at East Columbus, the head coach now. Yep, yep. So, um, you know, I hope next Thursday we're not dealing with a storm. Well, here's the problem we have. You know, our Kelly Jones is usually our, you know, chief yeah. meteorologist. And yeah. Kelly, you know, on another assignment right now. But he, if Kelly were, you know, with us right now, yeah. Kelly would have graphics. I actually sent Kelly a graphic. If you want to check my Facebook page, a graphic that puts that storm over our head next Thursday. But, hey, you know how that thing changes. And, you know, I'd love to have some rain, but I don't want any wind. You know, you, I think what you're saying is you'd like a delay, but not a closure. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you got me right. We got a little rain last night. Did y'all get any? We did. We did. That looks to be the last play of the ball game, yep, Brett. That's it. Our final score is James Keenan, the Tigers, defeat the South Columbus Stallions 55 19. Again, you know, the score may not be indicative of it, Brett, but there is a lot if you're South Columbus to be, you know, positive about. Yeah. Uh, offensively, um, I, I saw South Columbus do. A lot of good things. Um, you know, Rush Blackwell, you know, looked look really good tonight. Um, you know, the passing game looked good. Receivers looked good. DeMonta Gore had a, a really nice night for the South Columbus Stallions. Um, if you go back and try to figure out what you need to work on, um, you're definitely going to say it's the defense. You know, there's, there's been a lot of points put um, up against the Stallions, but it's, it's really good teams that's putting up a lot of points. Um, so, so now you're going to, you know, the different caliber of teams, and you're just going to get ready for them. Now, South Columbus scoring 19 had a chance to score as many as 30, 35. But, again, you know, 
correctable mistakes if you're south. Well, um, what, East Duplin only put 21 on James Keenan, and East Duplin is a really, really, really good football team. So um, I, I'm thinking James Keenan's walking off this field and saying, you know, South Columbus is pretty good offensively, but, you know, defensively they got they got a lot of work they got to do. But I, it's the size of the, of the defense and the offensive lines, Kevin. I mean, that, that's the story of it. Brett, they, they'd like to tell you the opposite – but sometimes it is the size of the fight, you know, size of the dog in the fight. Yeah, yeah. It's not about the X's and O's. It's about the Jimmy's and Joe's. There you go. And everybody back home can use that if you want to. Um, I didn't patent it or copyright it, so you can use it as you own. Okay. Once again, Brett and I will be at East Columbus next week for the Wolfpack coming in to face the Gators. Gators looking for a three-game win streak for the first time in several years. But coming up against a real tall order in that white belt Wolfpack team. If they can get that third win next week, that will be huge headlines. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. And the Wolfpack, as advertised, very stout this year. And coming off their first break, they played the first five weeks of the season, finally getting the week off, Brett. Yep. So not only are they coming up against a stout West, you know, white belt team, but a well-rested white belt team. Yep. Well, Kevin, I appreciate it. Um, another good broadcast. Um, hope everybody back home enjoyed it and got some entertainment out of it. And we'll, we'll see you next week, I guess. Once again, we'll see you next week in the swamp. For now, this is Kevin Toman and Brett Burroughs signing off on the Thomas County School Social Media Networks and 899 to be ZCO. We'll see you next week.